I'm Laura Redhead Benson, and we're back for the second edition of, we call it the Benny Files. The Benny Files. <laughs> that sounds quite scary. It's quite scary. But uh, it's actually by popular demand. I, I hate saying this out loud, but uh, <laughs> people apparently seem to like you on the podcast. Who so would have known? I've got my own series now. Is it? It's the Benny series. No, it was the Laura and Benny show. The Laura and Benny show last yeah. week. That's what we wanted to. That's that's what that's what people want us to do going forward. The Laura and Benny. Oh, the Laura and Benny show. Yeah. So like, we might be killing off Laura Redhead Benson. Oh, we won't kill her. Like or, right, <laughs> like Slim Shady. Like on a real. Oh, that's a, yeah. Eminem yeah, it's the same buzz status. this week, and uh, he's killing everybody on there. I'm laughing at the songs of how he kills everybody off. So is we killing could ki- people the best conversations you have in, in. Well, in the podcast, we could kill you off in podcast world. We, we'll we'll keep you breathing like. Right. I suppose my hair isn't as red as it was. It's more of a silver grey. <laughs> so, 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 you're, so you're kind of becoming the crap like and, and, and aging and kind of aging melting away. apparently. Yeah, because I'm I'm very young. Like I'm only twenty two. I mean, to be grey at twenty two. You're twenty two again. Yeah, I was actually twenty three, but then because twenty twenty didn't happen, right. I got to take a year off. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. And actually, this week we found out something. So we're finding out like dates that are we we weren't available for, and now we can do something. And dates that we were planning on doing something have been taken away from us, yeah. and we can actually go to a fortieth birthday party this year. It's true, actually. But are we at the point now where we get to go to fortieth? Ooh, I I don't know. Like I'm still getting used to being the thirties. Well, my sister's forty, so like it's not like that. It's us. It means that like we were going to miss my sister's 40th because we didn't plan ahead. And this is one of the biggest problems of being a supplier is yeah. if you want to do something, you have to plan two years ahead because you might take a booking. So if you want to go on a holiday, if you want to go... <laughs> holiday! <laughs> <laughs> we, had, we had big plans. Oh man, I was so excited for these plans. So we decided we were going to take a full month off in 2021. We were going to... Li- the child was doing the leave insert, finishing school and starting college depending on how that works out with the leaving search um, or whatever she ends up doing and month off literally right child sorted see you later we're heading off we're going to go to the furthest end we're going to go to New Zealand Japan big month away big holiday <laughs> that's gone now <laughs> that's not happening and poor Laura like you went the first time you were outside of Europe was when we went to America two years ago no it wasn't we went to Tunisia Oh, technically we went to Africa. We went to Africa. Well, it was the very tip. We could yeah. always see Europe from it. Just ju- jumped across on a But other than that, I've literally been to everywhere in Europe. But no, I haven't been to other parts of the world. Okay, so you've you been to Europe and Africa and America. That's and it. we were going, I suppose, to the other continents. Yeah, yeah. But, but that's it's, not really we're just well, you know, postponing. postponing. We're not cancelling. We're post. It might be 2023, though, by the time we get to do this again. Are we going to go on a cruise? Uh, no. <laughs> I always said I'd love to try a cruise, and now I'm never going to go on a cruise for the fear of getting trapped on the cruise. Yeah, okay. So, no yeah, thanks. Um, maybe, I've been trapped enough as it is. Maybe we can go on a holiday to Galway. Or, <laughs> so maybe we just have to. Uh, we're, we, we, do, we cover Munster and Leinster so much. Maybe we get need to go to Ulster and Connacht and just uh, broaden our horizons. Yeah, this isn't this isn't making me that excited. Like you're going from New Zealand, Japan, big holiday to you're going to bring me to Galway. <laughs> People come from all over the world to Ireland. Tourism is so big here. It's That's, beautiful. There's no tourism, no tourism here. here. No tourism here. No don't, tourism. don't be speaking like that. The hotels will be open. They will open. Okay, so from yeah. last week. I suppose catching up on what we finished off on last week, there was uh, a few things that kind of came out of last week's um, podcast. Yes. Um, and I think the biggest thing that, so like obviously the number of gatherings, we spoke a lot about that, but the social distancing aspect of a wedding, it seems to be the topic of conversation at the moment. Okay. But before we go on that, can I give a Tony Hewlett an update? <sighs> like... Yeah, go on, go for it. Why not? Sure, he wouldn't be like that, Tony. No, I think people people know. I mean that that, uh, and you. I think you you let them know on uh, Instagram. So we did two articles, and then we did the long uh, podcast chatting mm. about the roadmap and whatnot. But the day after the bank holiday Monday, Tony came back on Tuesday, and of course he got a grilling on uh, the roadmap and the ins and outs. And one of the first questions he was asked was about weddings. Yes. And um, he was somewhat sensitive. Uh, about it although he teased that he hoped couples did stay together 
<laughs> throughout this and I, I can't best wait case to, scenario I can't wait to see the statistics of um, the cancellations due to breakups or divorces oh don't that's that's very negative now altogether it'd be a low very percentage sad. low percentage low percentage I'd one in 500 as Irish you don't like the word divorce <laughs> <laughs> let's have another referendum but anyway so um, Tony's comments are down the bottom of the blog the FAQ blog the written mm-hmm. blog where you can also listen to because the of course spot. you went and transcribed it, word for word what Tony said because that wouldn't be a you thing to do otherwise just so important what he did say yeah. and if you actually kind of just read through it um, he's still taking that cautious approach what we were kind of discussing on the podcast and the assumption that we made from the roadmap I think we're reasonable that he is going to take a cautious approach it's going to be slow it's going to look at the data and it may be stepping back and forth in phases the dates aren't guaranteed we're really really hoping we're going to be positive this week because mm-hmm. I, t- I, I turned you the last week didn't you I? did I so did. I'm I all up for September weddings yeah. and I believe people can have September weddings now within a certain no like, the right mindset and creative oh yes. planning in your world darling because in digital y- invitations you would be quite happy to run around a field like dancing th- yeah dancing silently to you know um, other people not so much it depends. Ah, it's, 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 it's back to who we are. Yeah. yeah, it's personality yeah. thing. Yeah. So it is possible for those who just want to go for it and have a session and have a party. It potentially could be a big one. So it could be epic. It could be so a micro imagine, party though. It could be a micro <laughs> one. But like everyone else say has cleared off and there's not much going on in September. But if your wedding survived and it worked out and you came up with this clever idea, it could be like the greatest release of the lockdown celebration wedding. Yeah. People could be in the best form of all time. They could be. But awesome. then it depends on how many people you can have there. <laughs> <laughs> it's all back to that, Benny. It's all back to that. And then the other thing, I made a friend. Oh man, like I, y- you've no idea what it's like to live with this man. He, I think I mentioned this last time. When you latch on to something, <laughs> it is like it's constant. It's like it doesn't matter what I'm talking about. He'll just stand there. He'll listen to me, and then his answer to what I've asked is. So you know what I've done now, right? What I've done now is I've. <laughs> So we were actually on a walk the day after the podcast. Yes. I just finished editing. Shocking. No, no, the best we could get up Our to daily activities. We, we decided uh, we were walking the dog because you have to walk the dog now by about eight or nine o'clock in the morning. Otherwise, she freaks you're, out. you're in trouble because yeah. she, she's in major routine now. So we were walking along and I was thinking about uh, drawing a cartoon and you decided, oh yeah, is it like um, uh, Cry Baby Benny? Yeah. And you started slagging me off and kind of coming up with slogans for the Crybaby Benny. I think a Crybaby Benny, like, it's like Bedtime Benny, the one we wanted to... to you can't tell people that yeah. Bedtime Benny. These are my ideas. So <laughs> Actually, no, I should secrets. explain that. That sounds terrible. Bedtime Benny. <laughs> bedtime Benny is a teddy bear. <laughs> it's bedtime it's not on the guess. the best teddy bear in the world. <laughs> and just purely because it's called Bedtime Benny. <laughs> It's gonna sell. It's gonna sell like that giraffe. Oh. These are my vision. What's that giraffe? Sophie, Sophie the giraffe. Sophie. Everybody has Sophie giraffe. But bedtime Benny has a better ring to it. It does. That's why you. I can't believe now. I'm gonna have to get on. <laughs> I meant to buy bedtimebenny.com. Now I'm gonna have Don't to do before it. I edit it, it before this goes yeah, live. I'm gonna bedtime have to buy Benny. bedtimebenny.com. Dot <laughs> ie, and I'm gonna have to patent bedtime Benny kind of teddy bear type thing. I'm gonna have to get trademarks going in the US. Otherwise, Donald Trump is gonna rob the idea and all sorts. I don't think Trump's interested in your bedtime Benny idea. Oh, he'd take anybody's idea. That's true. Whether it's bleach drugs or rock and roll, he'll. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He was. Uh, he was congratulating the UFC last night on hosting a match. I'm so he annoyed knew. the UFC did that. <laughs> like <laughs> Benny is up in the middle of the night watching this yeah. fighting. I hate fighting anyway. I must. I'm gonna put that. You don't out like there. a good fight, like. I don't like a good fight. I what just if you don't were out in a night out and two lads were like fighting on the street? Would you not like stop and have a look? Or no, I think like, I just want to get out of there. Fair disgusted, enough. out disgusted. of there. Disgusted. Yeah. Right. But the fact that these. Mm, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I had to beep out about eight times last week, so you're not allowed to say that, Laura. Go on, yeah. But like, just what makes them think that they can go ahead with their sport, but the rest of the world? And I would like to point out that you told me that some of the fighter or one of the fighter at least actually coronavirus. You can't. Can you say bloody? Do I have to beep out bloody no, now? Beeping it out. Okay. That's about four beeps go right first. there. Yeah. 
Okay. But uh, he did, so like he actually tested positive on two of his team. So he would have four or five on the team and two of his team also test fires. But the thing was, he showed up on Wednesday uh, to Florida. Why are they having a, a big gathering in Florida? <laughs> let's where... think, where, where do all the old people live? Florida, let's go to Florida and have a match. Yeah, let's bring people to Florida. That's but anyway, he showed up on Wednesday. He declared that he had been around people who had the virus. So you think at that point they would kind of be nervous. And anyway, to cut the long story short, He's still around people all week, um, interacting, test, test positive. They don't, they announced that he tested positive last minute, I think, the day before. They waited so that it wouldn't be tear down the event. Um, and he is, his, his fight was off, obviously. And now he's kind of quarantined. And they're going to look after him. It's very good. But, uh, There's nothing very good about the story yeah, at all. It's these type of stories is why America is absolutely... I won't say the next word, <laughs> but it's true though, and it's like, and it's purely for profit. True, I suppose it is well, purely for profit. You can't say he, it's Martin Nelson. He travelled, I suppose, to Florida, so he's travelling around the yeah. place. It's also his team, yeah, full of the coronavirus, yeah. spreading it around the world, mm. and then he shows up, spreads it around the hotel, spreads yeah. it around uh, an event. It's and, not acceptable. Yeah, and I suppose the other thing is, it's an example of how serious it is because he was around people. He didn't know that he had it. He didn't feel sick. But yeah, yeah, he tested positive. So he, there's many more of us out there like if, that. If you, yeah, yeah, if you're around it, you're gonna get it type thing. Mm. Um, but the other thing was, I was laughing at them. They were um, at the end. They were doing a press conference, and they kind of like after all their kind of safety measures, they were all sharing a microphone, and nobody was wiping down the microphone as you pass it on to the next guy. Genius. And uh, yeah, and you're talking into the microphone as well, so maybe you shouldn't be using the same microphone as somebody else and all their droplets. Um, so, but everybody else tested uh, negative, which is good. Um, so, anyway, we ended up talking about the UFC from talking about Crybaby, Benny, yeah. cartoon, which turned out to be, it was a bribe with our head in the sand because basically, um, I suppose, <laughs> I was mean to bribes. I wasn't mean to bribes last week. Yeah. Wasn't that mean? It was just kind of like... Sulky the pants this, now, like, was a bit... Uh, a bit, 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 bit full on. No, but I was talking about the person who basically... Like, if you're going to have your wedding in September, which is a great idea to have a wedding in September... That's my new my new line. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm just gonna go. It's it, I wouldn't use the words. It's a great idea to have your wedding in September. It's a possibility to have your wedding in September. Okay. It's a it's possibility to have the most epic wedding ever of all time in September. <laughs> uh, but if you're the most kind of creative, fun, love, and easy going, and work it out, if you're the Benny of the world. But. The thing was, if you if you're kind of what we were kind of trying to say was like if you have expectations of X Y Z and realistically they're not going to happen in September, it's kind of like don't go around with your head in the sand pretending like everything's going to be okay and then all these kind of uh, rules and regulations are in place and you're just trying to ignore them, be aware of it and kind of deal with it and have an epic wedding. So we ended up <laughs> with that cartoon, um, which was uh, on Instagram. But we have another idea. When we say we. Uh, well, well, I suppose like uh, Samuel, who's the cartoon artist, kind of has like a portal to my brain thoughts and he's putting them down on paper. Right. So. I... But to be fair, right, the first one made me laugh because it was funny. Right. The second idea you have, which we're not going to say much about, is the more I think about it, a good idea because it will benefit, hopefully, yes. other people. And it's going to take a while. So mm. they reckon it's going to take maybe two weeks to get my brain thoughts downloaded onto his piece of paper. That's pretty good to get your brain on a piece of paper in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and then hopefully we'll update people and keep them updated. But uh, hopefully but it's, it's a been run. It's a project. It's a project. Yeah. And I think if any, like good will come out of these crises in different ways. And one of them could be this little uh, charity raiser. And um, it hopefully. could work out. And it's wedding orientated, um, supplier orientated. So it's connected to wedding industry. With whatnot, really, yeah. Wedding industry. Yeah. And it, gets past and future brides involved and yep. couples grooms and brides everything yeah uh, everybody involved hopefully it'll be good and hopefully, hopefully it'll work. it works out hopefully you can interpret my yeah, instructions I take a lot of two weeks to be honest <laughs> right so that's an update from last week do you want to actually we're going to talk about social people want to talk about social distancing distancing in terms of masks and weddings because uh, I know we yes. talked about social distancing last week, last week. And we talked about the different parts of the day and how we kind of saw, uh, you know, how, what from what we saw from the last wedding we did to what we think yeah. might be the extreme version of that going forward. 
but there is other little factors that I suppose we didn't and it's just from talking to other brides and it's kind of I you know they're coming out to me saying I was just thinking yeah like do we have to wear masks and it, you know it, it, and, and things who wears are, masks and who wears masks and you know, for what part do you wear a mask and do you have to wear gloves and who wears gloves and the hair and makeup have to wear PPE and like these are all things that people I think what they've done is they've they've started really process because this yeah, is what like, I want well, well, people this is like, to do like process if, the yeah, day and how and does and each part work when we're talking to people and we can have a pre-consultation we break the day into small little bits yeah. and people afterwards go wow I feel so happy now. Like the, oh, the, I'm much more done yeah. than I thought, like kind of thing. Because yeah. we, one, we yeah. worked through it and we spotted a few things that they might want to think about. Mm. Because when you break down a wedding day on a normal day, there's so many little bits. And yeah. you, if you just do small little things, the whole day or a part of the day just runs a little bit smoother. Mm. So similarly, if you start breaking this down, you then begin to dawn on small little things of masks or no masks. For any 2020 like that. couples that are hoping to do some mask, like a wedding in some format, yeah. they, they need to. They need to start thinking about, okay, if I'm doing this and I'm going ahead and that's grand, but you need to start thinking about the little details when it comes to social distancing and how exactly it's going to work. Because if you're not prepared for it, you don't want that shock on the day of, okay, your hair and makeup arrive, they show up, and then suddenly they've got like full face shields on, gloves, and you're you kind think of going. They're going to wear full face shields, like I come in like I, the lads. I, I think that they. I don't. I. I think they might have to because some of the some of the shopping centres have started. Some own... of the shopping, the staff and the yeah. grocery stores have started wearing them. Have they? Yeah. I suppose, yeah. I mean, the other counters, yeah. they have shields in front of them, so it's effective. And what I'm saying for shields, I mean, like, you know, the band that sits around your forehead and then you've got the transparent shield that just the, goes over your face. Kind of the welding kind mask. Kind of looks like a welding mask, but just transparent, yeah. Did, did you see the lady who was buying petrol in the States? Oh, I, I never <laughs> laughed so much. I think I shared that video on Instagram, but it was like she had a mask on and um, the lads behind the petrol station saw her coming in, had a cat video already. And your man says, where'd you get your mask? And she's like, oh, I, I, I made it myself. And what she'd done is, she literally had cut a hole from her nose around her mouth a little triangle. because she said she couldn't breathe properly and it was easier to was actually easier. wear it. Okay, so yeah. You're kind of going, okay, <laughs> genius. So let's go through all the little parts of the day mm. and basically let's talk about do you think masks are needed in that little section of the day and who are they needed by? And, and this might help people visualise what's going to happen on their day and what it's going to look like so they're less shocked I suppose if it goes ahead exactly because you don't want to be there in the morning and you walk in your your up stylist is now wearing Something. either a simpler mask or full face shield gloves or whatever else and you're kind of going I just didn't envision my morning like this Like, and it's not that you don't mean it but it's you've seen all those photographs of wedding mornings and you have yeah. a, you have a, a, a vision of how your day is going to run and suddenly you walk into a completely different situation kind of going oh no wait oh, this upsets me. This makes me feel uncomfortable. And you don't know why you feel uncomfortable, but you just suddenly do because you weren't prepared for it mentally. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let's do, whether your wedding's female, female, male, male, female, male, whatever it is. So, <laughs> oh, so many combinations oh, these days. Oh, combinations. Or if you identify as something else, that's that's a, a, a whole, we could be going on We forever, could go on and on. Ever, you don't need to name all it. Okay. Fine. Right. So, female morning. Yes. Which you see a lot of. Yes. Um, what do you think... So give us a rough general environment. Let's just presume, well, whether it's at home or in a hotel suite or whatever, mm -hmm. everybody is kind of probably in the most open space area, wherever it is. We won't mm -hmm. stress about that. Who does be knocking around? And then who do you think is going to wear a mask? Okay, or, so or, P or PPE? On the wedding morning, it would usually be, if it's a female wedding morning, it would usually yeah. be the bride, all of her bridesmaids, possible flower girls running around the place. You've got mom. And then you could have the sometimes as aunts, as neighbours. Depends on the size of the wedding. I would imagine it's going to be more at the minimal end of That's things because weddings are exactly. the neighbours aren't going to randomly call in and say, no, best of luck today." No, exactly. And that does go on a lot if you're getting ready at home. But that, that they might stand like you know at the other end of the garden, the garden wave you off, or leaving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there that, still that, might be a yeah. bit of fun, but obviously exactly. they're going to social distance. They're not going to come into the house, I'd imagine. Um, I was talking to an upstylist recently, and okay. she was saying that um, she's already kind of getting you know things in place. 
space. She's really thinking about it. She's kind of getting her, I don't know what she said, PP, but I don't know what her version of PP yes. she meant, but she, like, whatever protective wear she needs to actually have. Um, She's spoken to the, she's got a couple of brides that are going to go for kind of a, a very much a micro wedding, but they're still going to have to have the preparations going on that morning. Her hair and yes, makeup is still going to be done. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Um, so, okay, so you're talking about hands, gloves. Gloves. You're talking about either a simple face mask or you're talking about a full shield. Um, when but I presume they're not going to have like a gown on. No, I don't think so. I don't think that would be needed. Um, obviously, hand hygiene and sanitizing will have to go on quite a bit. But when it comes to the tools they're using, they'll have to have different like brushes for have, every like, person. Can they get disposable brushes? Um, I, do, I don't know whether they'll just have a different pack and then sterilize and them afterwards. Because um, okay, I know the, the makeup artist, um, we did, the last wedding we did, Ruth Anna Crowley was the makeup artist that morning. Okay. And she um, literally had like um, different packs made up and the name of the person on it. So these ah. are the makeup brushes I'm going to use for you know, the bride, this is the makeup brush, bride's head number one, number two, number three. So she used different brushes okay, on each Okay, so I've person. got an important one. So this is really important that you don't surprise them. Do you know that extra one? Can I get my head done? Yes. <laughs> Uh, the extra one, two, or yeah. uh, who told us I, I end up with yeah. 14 before? Like, yeah, that's the Rutana most said that. It was yeah. Rutana. Rutana, yeah. Rutana said she walked in and it was like, yeah. end up doing 14. Now she yeah. made it work, but like, yeah. she said it was hard work, and, yeah. and, and, that, and that's it. And sometimes, even if it's two or three or four, mm. it's a time pressure management situation. But in this case, it's a no, resources equipment problem. But I don't think that would happen anyway because you're going to be very minimal when it comes to, especially like if you're talking about late August into September, you're, you're not going to have people just coming out of the old work like okay, people so that have travelled that's, that's not going to be there and things like that and, and that's usually what it is so and so travel. we throw out a tip like uh, um, we don't want to be kind of encouraging people to be sending out mad emails but like this is probably mm -hmm. a nice one just to get a sense of it mm -hmm. so maybe check in with your with, with your stylist or, or, mm -hmm. and, and say these are the amount of heads that I think I'm going to have and kind of do your best to think of the potential amount of heads that you're going to have yeah. and then just say is there a plan for PPE or what's your idea? Is there any, and basically offer, is there anything that I need to do? Exactly, and that yeah. way, if the stylist hasn't thought about this, it mm. gives them a chance to start thinking about yeah. it. And if they have a plan, brilliant, they have a plan. Mm. But it just basically, they're better off having a plan than people kind of going on the morning going, oh, I don't like what the stylist is doing. Mm. But if the stylist comes in and has equipment and kind of has this thought process, which it sounds like Rudana has really thought about, mm -hmm. which is brilliant, um, it's going to make people more at ease and more of a fun morning rather than yeah it's just not being prepared let's every, everybody let's plan as much as we can yeah. yeah and then there was one other thing she was saying I think and I, I think she was more kind of talking about um, I think this was a wedding that they were just going to go ahead with and so we can talk about later on as well is they were just doing the ceremony part now and then they're going to have the big wedding later which is something yeah, that people yeah. are starting to to play with the idea more and more so this this instant it's I think it's um it, it's quite early like it might be the end of phase four beginning of phase five so it's still very much okay. within those it's phases borderline happening so, not happening yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. as well as pp and all that she she also did request that um there be a room be it um a separate bedroom in a hotel or a, a room in the house and it's just herself and whoever she's working on in that room yeah so at a time in a room it's minimal yeah. and then there's less mistakes potentially happen exactly okay. exactly that's, I like that so I think, then, but, but again, I think if that's, it's possible if it's possible yes and obviously like if it's a big open space I'm assuming that you could just have one end of the room yeah, but yeah true. these are these are like so you know and it's and if you're okay with that and you're okay with um that type of I suppose environment because the environment and the atmosphere yeah, but that, yeah you, want, you want it to be fun. You yeah. want it to be fun. So preparation for... The <laughs> what happened? We just <laughs> She's something. actually just showing me a chicken through the window. The you put it in with the bag, love, yeah? The bag won't catch on fire. No, the bag won't catch on fire, love. You just put the chicken <laughs> in the oven. Here's a little hole. There's instructions on it. Read, 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 read the, the instructions. Bag. Read the instructions. No. Did you just say no? It's all right. I can all put on pizza. See what happened. Um, <laughs> like... <laughs> This is this is this is the future, you know. This is the, she just shoved the chicken up yeah. against the glass. Maybe she'll uh, have a uh, have a, a video call with like eight of her friends to have they, a chat. They can discuss and, about and, cooking and the chicken. The eight of them, they might figure and out. I'm purposely not, I'm purposely not going into her. She no, needs to figure it out for herself. Better off. Yeah, like, yeah. Well, we might want to make sure it's actually cooked. Oh yeah, we won't need it raw. 
Yeah. We won't eat raw. But yeah, so okay. we won't get too off topic about the chicken. Um, but yeah, so I mean, that's wedding morning side of things. And, and that is something that, you know, it's it's something to think about. And I think as well as that, so that's from the supplier's preparation side of things and how they would... Um, Okay, yeah. Function. What about but friends then, and family in the morning? Exactly. And I was, you're jumping in ahead of me. You're always like, is it, you're just jump, cutting across me, I'm jumping in. Trying to facilitate. I'm the host. You shish. You shish over I'm there. Ju- I'm just a colour <laughs> commentator, am I? Yeah, yeah. That's all I am. A bit of fluff. Do you remember what? that story? Like, that's the, all I'm good yeah, for. Yeah, that's all I'm good for. Remember Rihanna said she did 14 remember? heads yeah. one morning. Do you remember that now? But no, but and this is something to, to consider. So you're going to have, say you have your bridesmaids. Say the bridesmaids are going to the wedding. Well, hang on, and you've hang got on. three bridesmaids. What, what, what if one of the bridesmaids is a man he's uh, a bridesman he could be a bridesman darling but I don't think that that makes a difference to what we're talking about though what your your actual like it it, it makes no difference he's still living and breeding he's still living and breeding and he's still he still has droplets that could get you like thanks for interrupting me though right sorry what I'm trying to say here is and if you could just be quiet for a minute (laughs) would be (laughs) no but you do need to think about this so if you do have bridesmaids and your bridesmaids are going to be involved in your wedding if it's your if it's just so one day you're going ahead with or if it's your ceremony and then you're moving on to a larger wedding and the bridesmaids are involved in any way the chances are the bridesmaids aren't your three sisters okay and even if they are your three sisters the chances are they're coming from three different households um, so and, and this is allowed at this point obviously that you know we're still doing things within the government and the HSC guidelines but your bridesmaids might just be your friends and you need to you need to have a discussion with them you need to talk to them and you need to find out what is their level of comfort when it comes to being a bridesmaid for you on the day so, and so being there in the morning so how much are they willing to be around exactly or, so they might not yeah. want to be around in the morning and they might say look I'm going to look after my own hair and makeup and I'll meet you just before the ceremony because okay. I don't want to expose myself to because that because they could have a family situation that's quite uh, exposed just don't know. whether they have young kids they don't yeah. expose or whether they have yeah. elderly elderly family that they don't, don't want to expose Underlying health and they just want to so be much. a little bit extra yeah. cautious yeah yeah I suppose yeah. what we saw in the last wedding, um, the, the girl was really nice, uh, who was a bridesmaid, and actually, oh, they were so lovely. Those she, they, they were, yeah, they were lovely. brilliant. Yeah. Um, but but that one of one of the bridesmaids, I think, when later on when it was kind of getting into a mad session, just she after just said, the meal. "Listen, I'm, I'm, she left, I'm, yeah. and she had a chat yeah. chat with the bride and, yeah. and explained, and it was cool, and it was a nice way to do it. Mm-hmm. She just explained and just said, "I'm gonna stay for." this part of the day so it's, yeah. it's, it's the most important part of the day she was there with her for the key will, points right yeah. there and, and, but, but I'm not just going I'm, I'm, I'm not staying for the dance and I'm not going on a mad session she left session just before the first and, dance and yeah. I'm just going to go home and I'm going to be controlled yeah. and, and just, just but, to be and, safe and safe, these safe. are things you do need to yeah. consider and when you with your suppliers I mean your suppliers will communicate to you either way but do you know like if your suppliers are comfortable being there they'll tell you they're not comfortable and I want to say there. this I know, I, I know yeah. we, were, we were chatting it out and we, and we were teasing out uh, suppliers have to be responsible as well and communicate as early as possible with, with people what they're willing or not willing to do yeah and and they uh, they just have to be honest like we're we, the wedding industry is very much uh, suppliers who really love their job and want to help out mm. and I think you're definitely seeing it now at the moment where people are working really hard to kind of get plan meetings yeah. or help postponements yeah or uh, to try to get to micro weddings if they can get the micro weddings mm. or whatever it is um, so they're really really helpful so they are really really helpful but they also and, and to an extent that can be their downfall in terms of they can be over help, helpful and they won't say no I won't do that but mm-hmm. they have to be responsible to themselves and their family and they have to be honest I think to whoever they're providing the yeah. service to and say I'm okay with that or actually I'm a bit mm-hmm. nervous about that and maybe come up with a solution yeah and I think there can be two sides to that because obviously you know the suppliers level of comfort and then all the suppliers obviously are you know most of them are self-employed and they're trying yeah. to run their own business and they're trying to survive themselves as well so if someone says if you one of your bookings is going to go ahead it, you know yeah it's income to you it's income um you would probably prefer if they postponed because you're still keeping them, but you're you're doing the wedding in a in a timeline that you're more comfortable with. So but if, I just, this is if the supplier is super nervous, or say if they yeah. had an underlying condition, or exactly. their family members yeah. had an Young underlying condition, and they were just nervous. Anything like that, yeah. Okay, so but, they, but I mean, you, uh, like, but this, they do but this need to a, communicate. They need to communicate. Yeah. It's not it's not fair for a supplier to kind of force a postponement. It, but, oh no, I'm not saying but, that. But I know you're saying yeah. they, they prefer, but. 
they I think they have to be honest. So if it is going ahead and they're really nervous or they're exposed, I think they have to be honest. And I and the and the 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 other side of it is is basically you're right. It's the financial pressure, and we're yes. all under financial pressures. Yeah. So it's hard for a supplier who's under financial pressure, and I suppose some of them. Have, so if we all go from like the second week in. March mm-hmm. potentially all the way up to something like September or October. No they, income. They've no income. Yeah, yeah. Or they're, uh, and they're on low social social mm-hmm. help. Um. So like that's a huge. It's stress. massive. Yeah, and, it is. And, a, it and is we're stress. all eager to get back. Yeah. We're eager to get back mm-hmm. for financial income. Mm-hmm. We're eager to get back to get over houses. Yeah. And we're eager to get back to interact with people and to do what we love. Yeah. And 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 just to be mm-hmm. to become. A I actually normal. I had a bride the last day. She's um. She's August wedding and she okay. has a plan B in for December. Now they're very, very hopeful that they'll be able to do something in August. Right. She's willing to absolutely slice her numbers. She's willing to adhere to social distancing because she does really want to go ahead at August. Now, obviously, she's just kind of waiting to see how the phases go, what the gathering numbers when yeah. they come out and all that. But she actually sent me the loveliest message the last day and um, apologized and said, I'm so sorry. I actually never asked you if my August wedding goes ahead. Yeah. Are you comfortable being there? That's brilliant. Like she actually and it like so like I told her not to apologize that I would be the first one to tell her yeah. we're not doing weddings and all and we would make that decision. Well we, we would, would not if it was if it was crazly silly. But then exactly. the flip side is I mean we are I suppose we're 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 both healthy as far as we know. Um mm. and and our, our child is seventeen, so she's fit and able. Uh, yeah. She has no major problems. But we both have parents over sixty. But I was about to say yeah. that we're isolated. We're in the countryside. Yeah. We're well away from our parents. And actually, when mm. we started out at the end of March, we were really strict with your parents and basically said. Yeah, my mom was like just wanting to come over for coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we we were, because we were at our wedding when this was all kicking off. Yeah. We were like, give us two weeks before mm. you kind of come and stand at the window type thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh no, we were really strict, and yeah. they completely got that though. and they got yeah, it yeah, yeah after a bit of yeah, chatting they, they got, they, that. They, they got yeah. that so so it's really important so but we, I just thought it was we, a we, really genuine yeah, and lovely is. thing to do for her to think yeah. of that and I'm not saying that brides and grooms it's it's not their responsibility so like if you if someone communicates to you I'm going to go ahead with my micro wedding late July early August and yeah. you're the hair and makeup for example because hair and makeup have a lot like so for us it's a little bit easier so they've got a lot more exposure than we do they're physically touching yeah, I mean, we, we we can stand off. Oh, we can we can stand so far away. We have equipment that we, <laughs> <laughs> we can be thirty foot away. Maybe we need no, to what? rent out a five hundred millimeter lens. <laughs> Yeah, and just flashcards up over our head. <laughs> what to do next? Smile, please have a wee kiss there. Be more relaxed. That was the best. Remember, as v, 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 v video guy, yeah, we're only being nice and actually the video guy that yeah. we worked with, and he goes, uh, just be be relaxed there, you know. Uh, 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 be more relaxed and <laughs> we were like we'll, we'll, we'll help you out there we won't yeah. say his name we won't yeah. hang him but we were having a bit of a joke I helped out back, back and forth and we basically we, yeah. we made a relaxed environment yeah. rather than um, be relaxed go. go be in love be in um, love but um, the thing I was going to say there about ourselves is we're the type of uh, self-employed service provider that we will go and we will go and help and we will probably go above and beyond mm-hmm. But that's because we are healthy. That is because we're isolated. Oh, our situation suits we're, us being able to do that. Yeah, whereas yeah. other people might not be in the same situation. Yep. Yeah. And Young they kids, might be exposed. All those things. But they yeah. might be under some big pressure yeah. to go. The financial pressures yeah. of life can be a lot heavier sometimes. And I know health is always the most important thing. But sometimes pressures on yeah. people. It's it's not that you, can, you can't see it. But you're almost not given a... Like, Everyone has a choice, but you're almost feeling like you don't, you have, don't a have a choice because but you that, need to make money but that, because you need to feed your kids. But, it, but, I, but <laughs> it's a little bit that, that, but as well, I think more prominent is we hate letting people down in this industry because oh, yeah. it's such an important thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it's huge. Ha- it, when you have to kind yeah. of let someone down, it's heartbreaking. Mm. Yeah. And that's just being genuine. genuine. And I think most suppliers yeah. are genuine. Mm. And I think that's what why most suppliers, when they, mm. whatever difficulty they run into, they they work really, really hard to ring around their organised solution or whatever yeah. it is. They don't just hang you. Mm. But sure, what, well, last year, you're one of your few friends. <laughs> few friends. No, one of your best that friends got true. married and um, you were supposed to be groomsmen. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> you were supposed to be groomsmen. Yeah. We didn't even get to go to the wedding. No, mind you, be a groomsman because we committed to somebody else's wedding day before they set so their date. So we took a booking say two years beforehand. Yeah. For a July, okay. Yeah. And we had by by the time uh, my mate came along, 
we had two bookings in random dates in July. <laughs> so of all the dates in July, we had two in. And he came to us about 18, 19 months yeah, beforehand like and basically said, I want you to be a groomsman. This is my date. Mm. And it was like, we checked it up. And... Um, we were we were devastated. Yeah, yeah we yeah, were. Yeah. And it's the same like for this year because I don't, I have a very small family. When it but the comes thing is, we to... had an argument. We were going to go. We were kind of you, to, you kind of trash it back and kind of because we were we were out and we were with people. And they were like, well, I just, just cancel. To, I just said to you, it's up to you because it's like I I would have still went to the wedding and I would have brought a second. A but solution, it's, yeah. It wouldn't have been Benny. It wouldn't have been the same. Um, without Benny. So, but like no, it was kind of a decision we made that we wouldn't. And it, and what I was going to say was that this year is the same. Like so, my cousin. Um, her yeah. wedding was supposed to be in September. So when they were originally got engaged, I remember saying to her, I won't tell anyone else what your date is. I will keep it to myself, but tell me when your wedding is so I can mark it off my calendar. Yeah. So she did. I marked it off, got all excited. This September, I actually get to go to a family wedding. And when I say my family is small, like as in we can all gather in a house and there's still space small. <laughs> there's not <laughs> many of us. Um, so unfortunately, she did actually decide to postpone her wedding. And of course, the date she's postponed to is somewhere next year. And the chances of me, I, kn- I knew this was going to come anyway because I knew the chances of us being like available yeah, I mean, when, when, be when so she had to move slim. the day wherever yeah. she was going to move it to was really it's really never going to happen so yeah. we now can't go to um, one of the few family weddings that ever happens on my family yeah um, now again but I didn't even like I didn't even because the, the wedding we're actually doing on the same day that she's getting right. married um, the is bride it in Munster, is it in Cork it's in Cork. We've got three that weekend, though, so we're all over the place. Oh, okay. Um, so the the bride contacted me first and said, I haven't contacted my venue. Tell me what your dates are, because I want you as my photographer as more than anything else, and I will work my venue around your availability. <laughs> so there was absolutely no way I would even dream of getting a replacement well, it, or not doing yeah, that. Yeah, but it, it doesn't matter who it was. Yeah. We, we still wouldn't get a replacement, yeah. but that's even more, more so. You exactly. would go over, yeah. way above and beyond way above that person beyond. because yeah. they've been... They've planned their new date around your availability, which is a massive compliment. It's so yeah. much pressure. Big I'm going <laughs> No, no, but, but it, you but wouldn't it is, you wouldn't it do it. And yeah. these and these are all things that like it's it's more from like t- we're not asking people to feel sorry for us at all. But it's no, but from these are, our, these are, our, and, our and what point are people gonna do? Yeah. And when it's whether it's your family or friends, your yourselves and, and you're postponing your wedding, unfortunately it might be random that one or two yes. people that you really, really, really want but they can't go. Yeah. But but at some point you you, you can't constantly no. keep keep moving. No. No. And it is tough to find dates. We'll get into it later. Yeah. It's tough to find dates. Um. Mm. Uh, for, for for next year. So. Yeah. So we think that's like so kind of. So back to what we're, we're not getting very about. far. No, we're not. No, we're, but the, in the morning that's kind of what we were kind of thinking <laughs> of. We talked a lot through the the different aspects of the different parts of the day, but you did think of one there. Mask. Right. So um, in terms of let, yeah, let's let's do ourselves. So in terms of so everyone's kind of like going, how are we going to rock up and how are we going to do it? I suppose. Mm-hmm. In the morning, you, if the room's big enough and it's not, it, it, it's it, it's a nice environment and whatnot. Um, you or I in the morning mm. shouldn't really need to wear a mask. Okay, let's just presume that if we have a lot of space, but we if it was a tight situation and it was kind of a bit nervy or whatever, yeah. we might have put in a mask. Yeah, unless we're told going forward that it's it's something that if it's mandatory. Is mandatory you're going to have to be like we've got masks on pre-order just so we're ready oh, yeah, we for this on, scenario yeah. and to be honest yeah. we're, we're, we're talking off the cuff here we haven't yeah. gone through this to, no. a, to a great extent I just thought I just thought of mm. the ceremony we may have to do it so okay let's let's go, let, let's start off in the most extreme it may be that we have to wear a mask all day long because HSC says you have to wear a mask all day long I'm now going to have to do more reading <laughs> they've put out guidelines yeah. and I'm going to have to read that yeah. right yeah. and I when wasn't it comes really, to things right. like you know in the morning like so getting details of the rings and the flowers and the okay. dress and stuff potentially we'll have to wear gloves you can't be going around okay, touching let's, let's other do that. people's yeah. um, the things they're going to be wearing and like so I, I pick up her bouquet yep to take a picture of yeah, it. Yeah, it's like we're slagging the UFC with a microphone. Do you know? Actually, and then, now when we tease it and now she, yeah, I put it down and now yeah, she picks yeah, up the bouquet. Yeah. Like, so it's either, it's going to be have to like hand sanitize it to the max. Like every time I touch something, uh, before I touch something, sanitize. After I touch something, sanitize. Or you're wearing gloves. But gloves, it's the same thing. So like you touch something with your glove. And then you touch something else with your glove. No, no, <laughs> you got to sanitize the gloves. Gloves. The yeah. great extent is like, so if you're putting on a glove... Basically, if if you potentially have anything, you're kind of you're you're you're, you're putting it in a cocoon because they love the word cocoon. But you're you're basically you're putting it in a sh- you're shielding between yeah. um whatever you have 
uh, and, and whatever you touch by, mm-hmm. by using a glove. So once whatever you touch is clean, yeah. that's good. But mm-hmm. you, you might have to hand sanitize your gloves. So as well, I'm going to give the heads up to suppliers. Suppliers, we've just kind of like dawned on us there. When you mm-hmm. get into that level of granular detail, mm-hmm. um, you, 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 you realize what you have to do. Well, Supplier, you have to think of all the little things like what do I do when I arrive? What do I touch when I'm there? How do I enter? Even just for us taking photographs, like fixing her dress because I'm yeah. always one for fixing things. Do you know, like you like and like not that I'd be getting too close to people, but sometimes people just a little need a little bit more direction even, when it comes to their small. hair or something. Like you're just trying to help exactly, someone out, you know, yeah, like or yeah. whatever it is, whatever yeah, small you, you do small little things. Yeah, his buttonhole's falling off. Someone needs to put yeah, it back just on. Help These out are the moments, all yeah. little little moments that you would automatically just knee jerk over and fix, but wow. you do have to stop yourself and go. I can't get in their space like that. I can't be touching yes. them like that. So, you yeah, one is to... minimalise your interactions big time. Exactly. So, 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 exactly. I want to give a heads up to yeah. suppliers. Start thinking about this because yeah. whatever We're going to have suppliers... to seriously think about the whole glove and sanitising thing because right. glove, sanitising gloves and um, using a camera. Okay. More, We've now more got sanitizer up. all over our camera, and I, I can't imagine. Okay. It will be. Okay, so we're we're we're, we're going to slip nah, through yeah, my hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we're we're we're, <laughs> we're going to have to do a lot of research likely, on this. Okay, we're going to have to do a lot of research and really and good yeah. for 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 yeah. thinking that. And you do have to. So you'll 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 mm. you'll, you'll realize all these things. So, mm. so suppliers out there really get into it in detail. Brides and grooms get into mm. it in detail, and you might realize something, and you might ask someone a question, and go for it. Like you'll help someone. And like, it's, it's it is easier for some suppliers other than others. Um, like some of the hairdressers and stuff, they'll they'll also have salons, so they'll be that have the procedures in place. Yeah. They'll just bring those procedures with them to the wedding in the morning. And um, the staff that's in the hotel, the, the they've been they like they've been given guidelines, and they have to adhere. Like for businesses, they have to adhere to the guidelines. They don't have a choice. Yeah. So the staff will all be briefed and given safety um, tutorials and everything on this. So the staff cool. don't have to think about it. They will be given their, if you need to wear equipment, this is the equipment you're wearing. How you do you behave? How do you serve people? These are all things that they'll be taught to do. So they don't have to think too much about it. But when it comes to photographers and videographers and people that are actually having full on interactions with people throughout the day, you really need to think about how am I entering? Like musicians is not too bad. Like if you're playing in the drinks reception, you set up your space, you've got your equipment to play away, you don't have to interact. But I was thinking about musicians as well. Like when we were kind of going down to the ceremony, yeah. like sometimes they're right off the top and it's tight with ourselves in the ceremony yeah. room. And, and, and Do you say magicians in the ceremony? No, no. Mag- Mag- musicians. Musicians. Maybe I, I, you said, I, think you think, I was like, yeah, magicians. Magicians, that could be... Uh... <laughs> Pay that back, Roshi. Um, but anyway, so things like that, you got to go in the ceremony. Okay, well, we pick up the speed and kind of let's lash through the day okay. and, um, um, and and go through. So in the morning, lads' morning to a great extent is they don't have a lot of people going in, but they could be going to a barber's and whatnot. That barber's going to have it sorted. Yeah, to a great place. extent, they're getting dressed, they're cleaning themselves up mm-hmm. and whatnot. But I suppose it's... Again, it's the same situation. The grooms may come to the house. They yeah, They not come to the house because they don't want to expose themselves yep. too long in the day. And then, uh, yeah, so people, people are normally calling in and out yep. or whatever or you're doing you're getting up to yeah. all sorts that just might be pulled back a little bit yeah okay um, but after the ceremony actually I was just thinking about it, travelling in cars so do you know the way the grooms and them would all get into one car <sighs> and then one of the grooms would usually drive like and you've been in I've been in all the them. cars yeah um, and then they'd all get into a car with each other and they drive to the like so is that something that people are going to be comfortable with or will they all say no 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 I'll take my own car because I don't want to be sharing a car with someone so the think poor about. environment it's been it's been spending months now recovering and yeah. I swear the birds are getting louder because I, I get up at like 4 <laughs> o'clock in the morning and, and like, I, lo- I love a good sunrise sitting out the back listening to a podcast I know they're louder I just think that they're not muffled by the sound of traffic and stuff like that it's, yeah. just, it's less noise around but them. then I think they're more confident stuff like mm. talking back and forth and whatnot I'm waiting for a deer to show up in our garden but yeah but these and the, and all the, and I'm, I'm not trying to be um, oh, you know, like, oh, this won't work that more. I'm not saying it won't work. What I'm saying this is, is you have into. to think about it. You have to think these things through if you're going to go for that wedding that's going to happen potentially August, September. Like, this if the rules is very are still early in place. In it. If the rules are still in place, you're going to have to think about it. And even if the rules have been, like, say October. Yeah. The rules, say we've gone through all the phases. There's no limits. There's no real limits other than the gathering. There's, no, gathering. no, no, no. Let's say so gathering no is gone, but then no you're still. But, but let's but say you're still being. It's all down to the comfort of other people. Like so, I think like uh, this is going to change. But just just social distance your your yeah. yourselves. Like even if there's no rules, that are basically saying. That's what I'm saying. Do this what is going to change yeah. us uh, how we interact. I think. Yeah. Going forward, like I like I'm a very very kind of like. Hugging. Yeah, you are. I am. I. I and I, I suppose when this was kind of there was noise about this. I I got to a point where it's like, 
I was getting, I was at the end of a call when we were meeting the couple, and yeah. I said, I, I said, I, I won't shake your hand, um, because I'm just at the end of it. It's, mm. it's nothing major. It's nearly gone. But she'll give you a hug. Yeah. <laughs> like you'll make up for it, yeah. and you are. You're always like, but I'm gonna have to, Like it's something you can't that do that. I yeah. can't be doing that going forward. I can't be going around hugging everyone. No. <laughs> Big time. Give us a hug there. You know when you're saying, you know when you're doing your long goodbye on the dance floor, Laura. Oh, I love a good long goodbye. And that I'm random, dance. and that random fella who you don't know has decided oh, yeah. that. He's just oh, like you were great crack all day, and he's he pulled you onto the dance floor, yeah. and he won't let go of yeah. you, and he's got you in the circle. Yeah. That's pretty much what's happening. Yeah, 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 yeah. But these are all things to think about. So that the car, how, like, how do you drive? But are we gonna have to get like badges saying "Do not touch"? No, we're not gonna have to get badges. We can get that, printed across touch. the back of our, our people things. People know. I think people will know better. Most people will know better going forward. But something you brought up as well. Was, um, so we were talking about the, the receiving line after the ceremony. Well, let's do the ceremony quickly. So, like before in, the ceremony. Oh, sorry, the pre-ceremony. Yeah. So yeah, I suppose it, yeah, there, there is a so pre-ceremony. So there's gathering. So, one of but the couple... in terms of it's, are you wearing a mask? This is purely, are you wearing a mask and not wearing a mask? Well, we're kind of or talking to was... more than that. We're kind of talking yeah. to. There's no point in going around in circles. But what I'm trying to say is, if you could just be quiet for two seconds, thanks very much. <laughs> um, is the pre-ceremony where the one of the couple usually is at the ceremony space to greet the guests as they arrive well particularly if the ceremony space is in a hotel so the yeah. new trend is a lot more people are hanging around the lobby of a hotel yeah, or an area lady. of the hotel or the bar. and even the bar yeah okay so like there is if there's a bar open is, is it, so yeah. sometimes like it, the drinks reception is kind of kicking off pre-ceremony mm. and, and one of the, uh, the, the the troubles hotels and officiants have are Get into the ceremony room, please. Yeah, we We're get ready to do this. Right, ready, so not. Irish people being, I suppose the old one was you're in the car park of a, of a church, yeah. and it's like lads, will you just come on? We'll go, yeah. go in. Still goes on. Go, yeah. go in, yeah. like. But now it's um. Now it's kind of get out of the bar, get out of the lobby, and get into the ceremony room because we're ready to crack on type thing. And but now it's just going to be a slightly different atmosphere. And we, I kind of experienced it for the first time at, at, at the small wedding we did um in in the middle of March. And it's basically, again, so a cousin comes along or a friend that you haven't seen along, along in the family and the family's kind of gathering and it proves you would have been a big oh, hug and a smile yeah. and a, a slap on yeah. the back type thing. And you kind of see Maybe that they're, they're, start, they're, 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 they're starting to do that yeah. and then they realise and they hold themselves mm. back and then there's maybe maybe they they have a bit of a joke and they do do an elbow bump or whatever it is, but it, I it, think it's um, a little bit of a different environment. Like I think the guests yeah. will start arriving. The guests aren't great for arriving on time as it is, but I think right. guests will start to arrive a little bit later because they won't want to be needlessly hanging around for any reason. So if your ceremony is at one, okay. I see people showing up five to one. No, don't, don't say that. On I the do. Podcast. I do because don't no. But, like, them. So if you're going to a wedding, yeah, and the wedding's at one, and you're going to a space. You're not going to arrive half an hour early to hang around. Okay, well, I'm going to take the other attitude of, the Roy Keane attitude of, you should be at training 45 minutes before it starts. <laughs> you should be ready to go. Guests should be ready to get into the ceremony and they shouldn't be the one stopping the ceremony. So if they, if you tell them, show up five or ten minutes beforehand, they're not. I'm they're, not they're, telling they're, them. They're no good. I'm not, I'm not telling I know, you're guessing, that. but like... I'm saying yeah. that for people's comfort levels, they're not going to be ha- They're not going to hang around where you, there's no need to okay. hang around. so they might be out... In the car park, sitting in their car, yeah. keeping to themselves. That or they might go straight into the ceremony room and find the little pocket where they feel comfortable, right. where they're a little bit kind of like they know they've got their space. And I would say that get to the get yeah. to the place, work out what a, where it is. So if you're yeah. guests at a guest at a at a wedding, get to the place where you're going to, suss it out, get a good seat or or whatever seat you're allocated. And basically just get well, I think the, the, the something that people need to look at, and some people do this anyway, but not many, is that they do actually need to put like names on the chairs, allocate this is this household, this is this household. Okay. You kind of have to. Yeah. Because otherwise, so like say you we go we go to a wedding with Amy, the three of us. The three of us want to sit together, you want three chairs together, and no more, two here, no less. Pull one over. Exactly. And then you've made that bigger and smaller in places. So I think that wow. if it is a case that the ceremony is within segregated households and a space between them, yeah. you do need to allocate the chairs so that this is this household household area and I think it will give people a sense of comfort as well that they'll know that they're being designated their own like safer space okay we're really we're realising a lot of things now so oh there's so much is there's so much ceremony venues whether you're a hotel a church or whatever you are I know I've been asked to go into wedding planning on many occasions I, I, I might need to yeah I think we have to start up a <laughs> I consulting might need to firm or something forward. yeah um, I will it, plan your social distancing wedding to achieve you okay so wherever your venue is 
can you please start thinking of yeah. every, little every little thing? thing. Yeah, every that little thing. That is crazy because I was actually thinking uh, yeah. as well. Um, no, the hotel will provide hand sanitizer off the door because they have to because it's it's I think it's part of the mandatory side of things that hand sanitizer needs to be available yes. within all spaces. You don't have to think about those things. The venue will look after a big part of it. And your wedding planner within your wedding, your wedding coordinator, they should be so on the ball with this. They should be so well, up to I'm, date with this. I'm they asking them to get on the ball and think about it. Like every question you have, they should have an answer, answer, answer. If they're unsure about something you need to go and answer it yourself because you, you don't want the wedding day to come along and you're unsure or something. Okay, so, so, so this officer that they've kind of requested, the COVID officer, the I'm, COVID going, officer. I'm going to name it the COVID officer. Yeah. Okay, the COVID officer is probably going to have to manage this and kind of have the answers mm. in the hotel and really needs yeah. to be someone who can think down mm. to small levels. And it kind of needs to be someone on the ground as well. So if a guest comes along and they've got a question about something or they're uncomfortable with a situation, they need to have an answer for it they and they need to, to it. fix it there and then. Because I think what the most important thing is, is that if you're at a point where we're in larger gatherings again, but there is certain restrictions like social distancing in place and you've got your guests there, you need to make your guests so comfortable like because they're going to go yeah, with well, anticipation. I was gonna, well, I was going to say something, right? So if we were going to a pub yeah. to meet our mates yeah. and we walked in and it was jammers. I'd leave. That, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So so, so if you're a guest, if something bizarre is happening yeah. whatever and it yeah. continues to happen, something strange yeah. and that's off-putting. Yeah. If you want them to still be there after dinner... Yeah. You need to make them but, comfortable but, but all that, day long. They might long. just like get out of dodge and still be in the vicinity, yeah. but really they're yeah. down the end and they're not interacting, yeah. and that's not a great situation. Yeah. Worst case scenario is they might go, "Sorry, but we have to leave because yeah. this is just." Or they'll dine with you perhaps, and then they'll just leave straight after dinner. And again, you don't want that to happen. Yeah, we so don't want that. So it's, so it's all about that. making people comfortable, comfortable in an uncomfortable environment. Okay, so after the ceremony, the, uh, another one we were talking about the handshake, and that's kind of grand. So let's presume. People aren't going to do the elbow bumps. They might just do the wave by, mm. or they might just get over it. But you can't have people queuing up. No, you can't. And that's why I was saying to the last day, it needs to go. You can't, like, so if you're coming out of space, like, you are you cannot have people in a line. Yeah. Because it's a, it's always a crowded line coming out. Yeah, it has right. to just go. And people need to leave the room in segregation. So, like, this area leaves, and you, you the door needs to be constant. Like, you know, you're going to Aldi, and you're going shopping. And if there's somebody at there the door... There are other good supermarkets other than Aldi. I know, but we go there. So, you know when they <laughs> they have... Uh, there's somebody goes into the little... Between the two automatic doors and they've got all the sprays and the yes. wipes and stuff. So, if there's someone standing there, the security guard in Aldi tells you to wait outside because you don't want to be in that person's yes. little space. It's the same idea for entering and leaving a space in a in a function room, in a ceremony room. You cannot have people on top of each other coming in and out of the room. You need to think about this. Do you know why my idea for my epic September wedding last week was so, so good? Why is because that if you had a football field for your oh, dancing, God. you could just get the biggest queue ever with your two meter separations right around the football field and you could still do your wave by you're actually not giving any bit of help or information in this. I'm going to get another venue. You need to go and find the biggest venue in the world where you can have a two meter okay. distance so between people. Have their people. They have their venues. <laughs> they're not going to change their venue. They have their venue in place and they're working with the space they have. And some people have large spaces. And Somebody people don't have, have someone have lovely woods and whatnot. You could just start a big queue down the woods. Down well, the outdoor weddings in Ireland, if they do go ahead, then it would be it would be helpful. I think we'll now it's going to be epic. I think if the yeah. weather is really really good, I think people will show would go for an outdoor wedding but you're going into the autumn season so no matter if the weather's good or not it gets a bit cold and people aren't too excited about sitting outside in the cold blankets blankets yeah. scarves and hats and masks yeah. right okay so, so that's handshake after the handshake you would end up doing we talked about the drinks reception on the last day we don't really have an answer to this other than they may segregate be, seating areas okay. for people yeah other than that okay but, but, the, but, but then in, <coughs> we're not going to get into that too much mm. detail but do you think people are going to wear masks not wear masks I don't know I think I think, I think some people because you see some people wearing masks anyway okay. you're out and about and you see people wearing masks because they're just not comfortable without the mask they okay. feel they need to wear the mask um, now I think those type of people probably wouldn't accept the invitation to the wedding anyway because if they're uncomfortable going shopping and feel they need to wear a mask when they're told but if they're a nosy too, jaw they might go so you might have people that will just have their own masks and they'll wear their masks at the wedding. Okay. If it becomes mandatory yeah. that if 
there's people in a space over a certain number masks are needed I just don't see how that would work I don't think that, that's not going to happen it's going to be happen. it's going to be certain environments that yeah. you're conf- confined like on a bus yeah. or a train That's I think that's yeah. going to be real. I don't so think it's going to be number okay. orientated why yeah. you wear a mask so then, anyway staff. you're drinking and eating so like you're not going to wear your mask doesn't really uh, like it, it doesn't work unless you're an American with a triangle cut out of your it, mask unless you cut <gasps> out the hole in your mask maybe she was onto something yeah she's onto something or they're going to have side. flaps <laughs> flaps mask flaps <laughs> Uh, Keep the points coming. But no, the staff, there will be the staff, the wait staff. They might, but it depends on what the guidelines set up. I think the rules was. are pretty much that if like cafes, restaurants, and stuff, so the mm. hotel probably mm. most likely. Mm. Grant doesn't matter, but don't, that, that, that's not our business to a great extent. But it may may just be the environment. This is what yeah. the environment is going to be. Um, family photographs and bridal photographs. So in terms of comfortness and masks, mm. so. It's kind of I, roughly what it is, but there, there may we have to know what the, 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 how comfortable each family is and how comfortable. But masks party won't is. be needed for a family photo shoot. Like we can say that. Like that's not. I suppose it's going to be the new thing, isn't it? Get your photograph with the mask for well, a Well, it might be for the laugh. Yeah. Um, so, just to, so if you get a creative mask, you, you could, could really have a bit of crack could, with that. And there's lots of them out there. I've seen lots and lots of them now at this point. Okay. But the, the, when it comes to family photo shoots and stuff, you know, you it just you just need to. You make it work, and we're we're, we're, we're going to make it work, to, and we're going to judge it in the situation that it is. Yeah, but you need to speak to like like we would do with any couple before this happened. Like you know, you have your plan, yeah, we put your questions, and you just you could just get a feel for do you know like who's involved in the family? Are there grandparents that are maybe yeah. older? Do they need to be you know keep the the photo shoot we do with them is just done separately, and do you know like all yeah these yeah. Work out something clever, you just yeah. you just talk, but talk to your photographer, talk to your videographer, tell them full detail about your family, and tell them what you and your family are comfortable with doing. Okay, but there's ways around these things. Grant, okay, so that's kind of quickly touching on yeah. the photo shoot, drinks reception, uh, speeches. I suppose if you're in the dining area and whatever the rules are in the dining area, if that's where the speeches are happening, it's that's what uh, it's yeah, gonna it's be. fine. They'll just go ahead as normal. Or the speeches is is there. It doesn't really matter. I mean, doesn't if matter. the reception is socially distanced and you do the speeches in the reception, doesn't matter. Um, it's the same as doing same it in the dining yeah. and the dining. Right, yeah. so, so forget about it. Why the speeches is a big section. Yeah. Yeah. It, it'll fall into whatever it is. Okay, but dining, we kind of touched on that last week yeah. again. And it's the same as in drinks reception. Someone who insists on wearing their mask while trying to eat their food is their business. <laughs> and, that's, and that's why I'm saying those type of people probably wouldn't accept the invitation because it makes ah, no sense okay. to go to a wedding with a mask on if you're a guest because realistically you're interacting, you're eating, you're drinking. It it it, it doesn't. And it, you're touching your mask over and over to eat like that that defeats the purpose of the mask. So you're you're if you're that person, you're not going to. Attempt. What about right? There's t- there's two options here. Like you're kind of your private snog. And we saw in the Netherlands the kind of the glass houses. Yeah. What if your wedding had little glass houses where you could still wave across? But yeah, I, I think the venues have enough going on at the moment now to be getting glass, glass houses, houses in for people. I don't know. Yeah, I think it's not quite what the Irish See, if you had the wedding. football field, right? Stop so going back to the, football, the, the football, field. football field. This is now, it, it's coming better. So if you had your football field full of little glass houses, everyone would feel very comfortable. They wouldn't necessarily yeah. have to wear a mask within their glass house. Yeah. When they step outside of their glass house, they mm. can put on their mask. Yeah. What kind of budget wedding have you been photographing recently? Because uh, hiring a football field and then installing glass houses and, you know, running that, you're running up a cost there now. And you It's know, not like the clubs they're using the football fields. I'm sure they'd be delighted, but no. You're, just, you're being silly, as usual. No. This idea is not going to work. I don't know. The level. Epic weddings. Mm. Silent dance floor. Silent, Silent dance disco. Floors. Um, one um, question go on. I've been getting a lot from people is, um, and they've asked me to talk about this, is I think the biggest part of the whole day people are finding very, very hard to imagine is the dance floor. Okay. And, and is the dancing. And, and we did talk about this. the bands as well. Yeah. And they kind of, they, well, I, I think it's fair enough. They know like a certain type of wedding is not going to want the bands because one, you have the social distance and two, it's very, very small, say. Mm. But obviously the larger weddings where there's going to be a lot of people around, yes, you're, you're if you're having a band, you're still going to want your band, mm. but they're still trying to envision how it's going to work. Yeah. And, and, and I suppose that's going to tease itself mm. over months and months and months. We and and the, I wish I had an answer to this, but yeah. there is no answer to this, unfortunately. Yeah. This is, and I think this is what they were kind of trying to say the last day when they had that briefing that when there's alcohol involved, it is a high risk People let loose at night. They're going to end yeah. up doing the conga. They're going to yeah. go, oh yeah, it doesn't matter. They're going to yeah. start spraying each other with Corona beer yeah. and um, and they're going to start dancing and being lunatics and yeah. they just let yeah. loose and jo- 
it's more of it, it, there's not bad intention but it's, it can become a bit jokey mm. and that's when mistakes can happen as well. exactly yeah and it, there is no answer to this part no. of the day there is not there really isn't um, and I don't think there will be for another while and a lot more information is given yeah okay right uh, and I think another the thing I wanted to talk about today was guest comfort, but I think we've we've talked we, about that. We've mixed yeah. comfort and yeah. social listening into one, yeah. and you were correct to kind of uh, reprehend mm. me, uh, reprehend yes. me, reprehend, reprehend. Give you a slap, 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 slap me, and uh, tell me to be quiet. I have to tell you to be quiet on a daily basis. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um. Next up, developments this week, and there was a really good positive one this week. This is like brilliant. Yeah, we that? don't know. What was the positive you know, one? You're binging again. Can you put your phone Sorry, on silent I'll there? I'll put my phone your on Your phone silent. just bings all day long. You try and like switch yeah. off and watch an episode and Laura's phone it's just starts buzzing and binging and vibrating. And just two seconds. Tell them. Tell them. Tell them the coronavirus on. Um, it is actually just emails. I'm getting married. Lovely. Quick, stop the podcast. There I need to answer this. <laughs> <laughs> Business. <laughs> okay. So the rule was that Next week, when, when the rules slightly change, when we go into phase one, mm-hmm. gatherings of up to four people outside can happen yes. for a short period of time. Oh, yes. But spiritual ceremonies... Go on, the lads. Credit to them. Yeah. They saw that they had a, a location in their sanctuary. Yeah. That basically, they can control it, so yes. they can make sure it's safe. Mm-hmm. Okay? So, the celebrant can be the person who's looking after the sanctuary, make sure it's in right, all right. So it's only one person. Yeah. Themselves. Make all sure in the same space. Right. Yeah. And then you have the couple, the wedding couple, mm-hmm. and then you have their witnesses, two witnesses. Um, so that's the legal requirement is five. So they've gone on to the HSC. Yep. And they explained the scenario. They put in place procedures and mm-hmm. whatnot. And they've been given the approval to have... Micro, micro weddings. weddings. Yeah. yeah. So, Which is great news for people. So we now have three wedding types. We have a micro wedding, mm-hmm. we have a small wedding, mm-hmm. which we don't know what the rules are. No. And we have a larger wedding, which we don't know what the rules are. Yeah. Now, micro so, wedding's not a new thing, darling. No, no, but, okay. they, but in terms of, but in terms <laughs> okay. of people coming up with solutions yes, for this. Yes, yes, So yes, the brilliant yes. thing is, yeah. you're madly in love, you really want to get married, and you want mm-hmm. to make that commitment, um, whether that's all you actually really want to do in the first place, and basically because only four people could meet up. You oh, could, weddings couldn't happen at all. You couldn't yeah. until yeah. phase four, which was yeah. the 20th of yeah. July. So do, No, there... I don't think the micro weddings are actually going to happen with spiritual ceremonies until the June 20th. I think it's June phase 10. Two, June 10, sorry. Then, which so, is so it's phase July two. 20 this is phase four. The, uh, June, June 10 is basically when, when they're approved. Whatever. Uh, yeah. Forget about the phases. They've but just, it's, yeah, it's the 10th of June onwards that they can they've do They've been given permission. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, is that conditional that we're in a certain phase? I, I don't know the, the finer details of it. I just know that they okay. lobbied for this and they got approval. So, I, 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 the spiritual ceremonies will communicate with you. Yeah. But the great thing is, so they got approval. So the HSC were flexible. Like, if they were really, really, really super stringent, they would just say, no, the rule is for. Yeah, exactly. You can't be doing that. But they didn't. They, mm. they realised the rationale behind it. You can still get married. Mm. Uh, and, and that's brilliant. That's So mm. we're on the up. The positive news is coming. We're on the up. But that brings me to... Um, what a lot of people are actually thinking though is to have their micro wedding or their very very small wedding on their original wedding date and then they're moving their celebration wedding to next year okay um and there's at the beginning there was kind of some people were doing this i was helping them with it but it's it's becoming more and more of a thought process that people are actually becoming more comfortable with i think okay um so like the people are doing it in different ways some people are having the ceremony um, bare minimum people they might go for dinner afterwards just themselves um, and then they're having a second kind of but it's more of a party so like you know she, they, they probably get all dressed up again but it'll just be kind of say from the drinks reception everyone will arrive and onwards and that'll be the rest of the day but okay. the second way people are doing it one of our brides is doing this way so she's having her ceremony on her original date minimum number of people we're actually going to do a bit of a photo shoot for them and everything's cool. to document the day yeah. and then next year um she's having her full wedding day so she's still going to have the morning she's going to actually have a second it's ceremony it's kind of like a renewal it's kind of like the a renewal the quickest renewal exactly, ever exactly exactly but it's kind of it's kind of like a one year thing because it will be a year for her yeah so but it's she's, still it, it's still important to say it in front of people like, I think so. the reason yeah. why you kind of invite everybody is you're declaring in public yeah. this is our commitment yeah. yeah and you still get to walk up the aisle 
yeah. in front of all your friends and family you still get to you know exchange vows and rings or whatever else you want to do and we'll still and have a buzz and be emotional oh, well, because people are dying for that yeah, day like that's it so it's kind of like <laughs> it's kind of like the, the you know the people that have and we've we've seen people do this the people that have eloped yeah, I mean, we've got off, like, like one, and then one come of the back best videos had... I've ever seen. So, so when I I do be research and all sorts, I'm watching uh, uh, wedding videos in silence and stuff, and and you've slagged me off in previous yep, podcasts for that. And um, but one of the best wedding videos I ever saw was. An, an American couple that went to New Zealand up the top of a mountain type job mm. and basically they they eloped and had the bare minimum yeah. and, and there was only themselves and the officiant and there were probably two witnesses off camera mm. but they were really kind of uh, it was all about them yeah. and their commitment yeah. and that was one of I just remember it being the most epic mm. where they just snuck away they kind of told their story throughout the video which was probably really really good um, and, and then they kind of uh, read their vows which is really cool mm. on the top of this mountain um, and, and New Zealand mountains sure pretty cool Lord yeah. is a, a wee bit of a va- fan of uh, Lord of the Rings and whatnot. there's, yeah. a, there's a reason why it was made there yeah. um, so that was one of the most mm. epic ones and of course, our famous story of one of our own couples, <laughs> Sandra and uh, Graham, the, the, the most epic of stories. So, um, yeah, they went what, to Vegas. They went to Vegas, like so. They got married. Just the well, two they of them. were just engaged, and they were going to have a long engagement. Mm. They but went. They were, they but were they were in Vegas. Oh, no. That's another week. So I think we're up to six. Okay, so they said they said darn it. Darn it. Right. Let's get married. They said darn it. They got um, married. They got married. Um and they, But my favourite part of the story right, yeah. is that we met them at a wedding show. Yes. And we then met them Like six months later. Yes. To, um they were booking us our wedding photographers and they told us the story about getting married in Vegas. But my favourite part about this is they told us. Yeah. They didn't tell anyone else. <laughs> so for a number of years. Yeah, that's right. We were one of the only people that knew that these people had actually gotten married. Their parents didn't even know. Particularly their parents didn't know because they were going to have the traditional wedding. Yeah. And, and um, so that day, the priest was like, but, the but priest he was actually brilliant. he was brilliant. He was such a character. It was he he like to the, all the guests who still didn't know that they had already gotten married, did a full ceremony, pretended to sign the register. He was saying, "Just smile the face there." He was hilarious, absolutely hilarious. But we used to meet up. We used to randomly bump into like Sandra and Graham around. Yeah. They, they live in Cork, and we'd randomly meet them, and then mm. they'd be talking, and they say this is our later plan, and then like they would have like this idea of. How they were going to reveal it. And yeah, we were like, no, and we were like, oh, you have <laughs> you to tell your parents. That. You can't do that. So yeah. in the prior, prior consultation, we were kind of, uh, we were chatting away to them. And I think we, we had a chat with them. We were kind of like, have you told your parents yet? And they mm. had just like told them. Because I think we met up with them. Um, the, we went to Graham's the, quite, quite, quite close because they had a photo shoot in Graham's parents' house, which is mm. has a lovely backdrop, a lovely garden. Yeah. And um, they, they had just told the parents. Yeah. But the parents were really cool. They were really nice, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was good. But it, but it was good, and but it was in the speeches. There was there were dropped mm. hints throughout the speeches. The slideshow, and, and, and then and then they so said, funny. so yeah. in case you didn't get it, like uh, here's mm. a slideshow, and by the way, and then there was a big yeah. picture of themselves yeah. at the kind of the yeah. famous Vegas sign. Just mm. got married, and actually that had happened. So we're not saying to then. people go off and secretly get married and then have a wedding next but year. Micro but weddings you can are do cool. Whatever, like yeah. so. If you are kind of thinking, I'm so devastated that I can't actually. I don't care about the party. I don't care. I just want to get married. Yes. That option is there to you. It's true, and it can be still special. Yeah. And oh, absolutely. And I think it kind of, in a nice way, it becomes just about the two of you. It yeah. Takes away all the other noise. Yeah. Just quite just everything in else. A, you can be in a zone. It's make that commitment. And yeah. It's about what it's all about. Cool. So it's not the end of the world. So um, the other announcement um, from our good friend Dr. Tony Hulahan. <sighs> Which is more of a hint towards again the caution. So he mm. he's been pushed all week on the publicans want to open up early. Yes. He was on a radio station. The Vintners. On the chat show. And basically they had rolled to him with a proposal. He said he was gonna write back and he was basically being pushed and pushed and pushed. And it was the first time he kind of actually said he as close as he could say a yes or a no. Yeah. And he basically said that he could not envision the pubs opening six weeks earlier than what they were supposed yeah. to. And that's as good as I'm saying, it's not happening. Yeah. But he is going to tease through and, and maybe they can kind of really give evidence as to how they're really going to manage it and it's really going to operate nearly like a restaurant is going to operate in its kind of restricted way. Mm. Um, the, the pubs would sit down and whatnot. Um, but that's a hint of they're not just going to cave and let people run ahead. 
No, you need to take this timeline very seriously. Okay. Um, if, if if not, it's going to it's not going to be shorter. If anything, it's going to be longer. Okay, so I think. L- yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean that that's yeah. being cautious. Yeah. But but just from that, like yeah, he had an opportunity to say, oh, they put forward a proposal. It seems mm. reasonable. It does seem very much like the restaurants. So yeah. we're going to allow it, and and that could that could fall into hotels opening, hotels being allowed to have a bar, that all that starts knocking on and coming early, and that would be brilliant, and weddings could could, could, could uh, happen quicker, and we'd all be far more confident in terms of the type of weddings that we're going to have. But the caution is they're going to still take this cautious approach. Yeah. So just they're the type of mm-hmm. hints of what's Everything's the been so cautious from the beginning, they're not going to change their tune on that. Right. And then the other side of things is the uh, the leaving cert. Oh. <laughs> Oh, the leave is like your sister is a vice principal. Michelle, yeah. we feel sorry for you. My I aunt like is that. a yeah, teacher. Yeah, yeah. And there's lots of people we know that. But I suppose they're on to plan C. Did you end up on any plan C's? <laughs> oh, I'm well on to plan C. He's got plan D's going on there. Oh, um, right. uh, but uh, like I, I and it's got nothing to do with weddings, it's the leaving sir. But I think some people took They got excited, didn't they? They took it as a hint as sure if the leaving is happening. Yeah, and then when they said it wasn't happening, they've taken it as, well, if the leaving search can't happen, how can my wedding happen? So, you know, you can read into things all you want, but the leaving cert not happening... I think that's it's more of a resource for, problem. Exactly. It's a, it's a, I don't think it's got to do with the numbers and gathering. So they could split the kids into a million different classrooms. Well, that's classrooms. what they were going to have to do. Like, But they would yeah. ha- they would need enough rooms to, to divide them up and make sure that they're all a certain distance apart. Yeah. And then they need an invigilator for every single room. Well, that's and they probably realised, once it multiplies out in that manner... Yeah, it becomes it's very, a massive, very difficult. Yeah, it would be. Um, so I think, but some people saw that as a as, as a as sign a slap, like that. It's it's if the leaving start can't happen in July, beginning of August. Well, how is my wedding happening? Like if they can't do it in that controlled environment, how does a wedding is which isn't really that much of like the whole wedding day is not a controlled environment. Certain parts can be, but certain parts like the dance floor. Yeah. It's not exactly a controlled environment. So they were kind of... Some people kind of were thinking that way, but I wouldn't think... Read too much into that. No, I wouldn't read too much into that. Um, I don't think it has anything to do with... I mean, the, the flip side of it is, while they're they're not sitting the actual exams, they're going to do this predictive grade thing, and they're kind of, they're still racing ahead to try to get kids to college. Yeah. So the other thing is, they're still trying to get colleges open in September. But at the same time, they're being quite cautious when it comes to, there has been people saying but, that they're hoping they'll But it's not, it's not like, oh, let's just slow down, because there's no rush. But they were kind of saying that the colleges, it's, like, the rush for September is more that there will be an option of an online start to the year, so that you'll be able to start your college course online. They're not, they're they're not they're not clearly saying what okay, I'm gonna give another hint campus. as to why we should be really cautious or why why society is being really cautious, yeah. I suppose the like the big boys of Facebooks and Googles and everything like that mm. in Dublin, they basically they're they're they they've said employees, if they can if their job kind of allows for it, um, they have an option to work from home for the rest of the year. Okay. And I suppose they would have done a risk analysis and they yeah. have some smart people in there, I presume. And <laughs> you'd hope so. And they've decided they're going to take the cautious approach. Yeah. There's no let's. There's no need to gather all the employees mm. in, in one building, in one office. It's a serious um, number of employees though as well. Though. Yeah, so it's I suppose. Management. It's a wee bit bigger yeah. than a one It might just give them a bit wedding. more, it's very open plan as well, I suppose, in some office spaces. So it might give them a chance to kind of open plan office space this could be a thing of the past you know they might all need to be given little going back to little like yeah, cubby holes yeah plexiglass more. I've seen I've, I've been reading the internet I like you have well you see my, my we've, kind we've of we switched roles here now we switched roles Ooh. but this like my little uh, glass house in the field yeah, and there's no so, glass so, so in you're, you're, are you are you advocating now for my no I'm not sit down that, glass I didn't wedding? mention that you 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 read really into things where that aren't there what's what tell me on that today okay. but yeah so I think other than that there hasn't been that much developments when it comes to weddings. But no, um, no, no, the brilliant one is that the, the, the micro ones can happen. Well, yes, but other than that... And let's hope other um, organisations, so spiritual ceremonies have done it. Yeah. Let's hope uh, that other organisations go ahead. And I presume yeah. if spiritual ceremonies are going to happen, maybe the HSC can do it as well. Um, maybe they Yeah, because they, they'd all have registry office. They, they can do it, the registry yeah. office. So yeah. you could go to the, the official registry yeah. office. You could go to mm-hmm. uh, spiritual ceremony san- sanctuary. Mm-hmm. And hopefully maybe your church will be able to help you out. And if there's any other organisations out there, mm-hmm. I don't know whether they have uh, buildings or rooms or whatever it is, but maybe they can come up with solutions. Yeah. So maybe if you, you really, really want to get married, you still want to go through that process and kind of make that commitment, let's hope over the next couple of months that... Mm-hmm all those organisations get the approval, put in place a prop policy and procedures 
uh, and micro weddings can happen for people who want to have it uh, while we're waiting for the smaller weddings to happen and while we're waiting for the larger weddings to happen. Yeah. Cool. Brilliant. It's good. Good news. Good, good news. news. Good news. Like a bit of good news. Okay. Then from good news to problems. <sighs> okay. So. Can we skip this part? We won't get into it too much, right? Because I was thinking about this and it's kind of like, it's it, it's easy to kind of get your back up and kind of be like on the side of the consumers and kind of our rights and power to the people and whatnot. Power to the people. But you've got to look at your contracts. So yeah. we've we've heard or we've, uh, people have asked us for advice based on mm. venues have certain contracts and basically rules around postponing and cancelling mm. and whatnot. Okay. Now, can I just say that some venues have been absolutely outstanding when it comes to helping couples going oh, I'm not being, through this. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm just, yeah. I'm just putting that out there, that they have been so accommodating when it comes to, you want a plan B? When would you like your plan B for? I'm not going to put a restriction on when you can put it in. It doesn't have to be in the next six months. Yeah. You can put it into 2021, 2022. Like, when do you need to make your mind up by? We're not going to put a restriction on you. You take your time whenever you're comfortable letting us know. We'll take that from you. Like right. other places then are being a little bit more... Like, it's, well, they it, have they just, a window. They have a window and you have to kind of um, comply to their window, which is fine. And then what I have had people on to me and they've been quite upset about things is... And I'll give you a, I'll give an example. Okay. Right, without naming anyone and just just a just a brief example. So person that was supposed to be getting married at the beginning and when all this was happening. They can't get married and they've moved their date to a second date later in the year. They're now but they're still in twenty twenty. Yeah. Okay. So they've had they're on their second date of twenty twenty. They're now quite nervous that this second date will not be happening yeah. because they just don't know what's happening with gathering numbers and yeah, we'll talk to them all we don't know this. whether all of September October yeah. is going to go um, yeah. so they're now considering either cancelling completely and just kind of going back to it down the line which some people have done or they're considering going to their plan C the, the problem that they're now coming up against is that certain venues have contracts that well they have, probably all have contracts well they, they all have, have contracts specific in the contract specific contracts which when it comes to payments and so you pay a deposit to book your day same as everybody what they're talking about is installments so the next installment will be due whatever number of months before the wedding and then the last installment would you either the week of or the day before or whatever it is whatever way. I'm not going to go so into too much so they have a payment process or a schedule schedule payment the, schedule yeah. exactly the problem is, is they're contacting them now saying they possibly might be able to have to move to plan C but what they're saying to them is is that they're not really offering the plan C as yet okay but they're all but what they are doing is they're asking for the next installment yeah now the next installment from the examples I've been given, has between anything between 40 and 50% of the overall yeah. um, wedding bill, which when it comes to paying venue, is quite a hefty wedding bill. Yeah. So now, and this is just, this is, this is, this could be a minimal number of venues. This is just an example someone gave me. And it just, uh, the reason she gave me this example is because she just wanted us to highlight it. Just to simply say to couples, read your contract. What are the payments? And, like, but there's, the, 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 there's a potentially a, penalty it's not like like yeah. they're, they're being asked to pay x amount up but mm -hmm. there's also penalty clauses for based on the number of mm. days or months that you cancel from your wedding yeah different percentages of percentages you're going to lose yeah and there's high percentages the, the percentage gets higher closer you get yes. to your wedding obviously but you, what we're getting at is grant we kind of uh, gave a bit of voice and teased it out with her um but people need to go and read their contracts and be aware of what's in the contracts mm. The, the the I kind of thought about this and I swung back around to the kind of venue side of it in the sense of so if you're having a twenty grand wedding say okay yeah just to keep it simple and if ten grand is going to your wedding and ten grand is going to all your other suppliers so ten grand to all your other suppliers let's say is kind of between five ten and fifteen suppliers when you divide it up yeah you might be giving two grand to a videographer you might be giving five hundred quid to a hairdresser or, mm. or whatever it is and, and and it all racks up between clothes and everything to another ten grand so the biggest chunk of it is the venue yeah. so it's a different ball game to the venue when something happens or doesn't happen they have a bigger exposure when it does or doesn't happen so from their point of view that's kind of probably why they have those procedures contracts and percentages in place in a normal situation I think that's it's it's completely acceptable. Oh no, but but, it, but all situation. I'm saying is that's why they have that. Okay, so that mm. that's what it is. But you, you, in terms of what we're saying is because it's so important, they put in place a strong contract. You need to read that strong contract and understand that strong contract yeah. so that you understand what your rights are or 
how how you can get in and out of that contract if you need to get in and out of that contract yeah. or how much you're going to be penalized or at what point is the optimum time to get in and out of the contract to cancel not con- cancel postpone mm-hmm. or do you take a hit of x percentage because you want another date and um, i mean do go and speak to venues i'm sure venues are going to be understandable in, mm-hmm. in this situation and hopefully they can talk to them and um, but you got you got to read your contract and kind of work it out and in the same way the venue are using the contract to say well there's going to be a penalty clause of x percentage you can use the contract and say actually the contract allows me to do this and this and therefore actually i'm i'm not going to be penalized because i'm i'm using this part of the contract so the contract has to be balanced yeah and um, it can't they can't, the, the the venue can't just make up awful rules that go against consumer laws and whatnot mm-hmm. so and uh, so the venues are are right to an extent to protect themselves because it is such a big exposure and it, and they have to make sure that it's okay but there is consumer rules in there that will protect them so people just need to read the contract and understand this look up their consumer rules maybe and kind of come to a balance talk to the venue the best in, when there's a problem is is to talk to someone and kind of when you actually talk to them and, and, and work it out people tend to be more reasonable if you're just smashing back and forth with emails we can all under, misinterpret text mm. so understand your contract talk to people verbally give suggestions or look for suggestions from them and keep going back and forth verbally and kind of tease through it if you, if you get into an argument back and forth unfortunately sometimes it can be who's going to win the argument rather than what's the right solution yeah. whereas if who's it, the stronger yeah who's the stronger and we've all been there we won't yeah. we won't give yeah we've yeah. had arguments before haven't we very few <laughs> We're, we're the perfect couple. The, the kitchen is like the neutral zone, isn't it? Yeah, the yeah, neutral zone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah where yeah. the hugging and kissing happens. <laughs> the kitchen. Good God, I'm So you've got to work, put forward a solution, mm. okay, rather than try and beat the venue. Yeah. Give solutions. Keep giving solutions. Keep giving suggestions. And hopefully, if they're reasonable enough, they should help you out. And if they're not reasonable. Yeah, well, that that you got you got to you yeah. got to work that out. But yeah. but but so it's it's something that so we're telling people have a look at your contracts because yeah, just don't assume it, that it's not going to cost you money. Uh, don't the, be blind. The whole don't, don't look at it in, yeah. in, in two yeah. months' time when yeah. you had a chance to kind of to to, to read the contract and yeah. maybe be in a better situation. Exactly. Okay, so yeah, I think that that was kind of one of the bigger problems that people were finding. The other one is um obviously availability for next yeah. year. Um, and like I know I talked about it this week, but even the the difference between when we spoke last week and this week, right? Like the amount of dates that are getting picked picked up is it's it's crazy and. Okay. It's for us. We're um we're almost done now for next year. And uh, well, I suppose the, the okay. Unless we're, you get married we're, on we're, Tuesday, we're getting positive this <laughs> yeah. week because we were negative last week. Yeah. One, we're getting to a point where we were negative last week. I was extremely positive. And I suppose I was really excited about my epic September you wedding, were. which is the best idea. And now that it's expanded this week, I might have to do a blog on how to have the most epic wedding ever in September. If as long as you don't mention football fields, glass houses, or silent discos, you're allowed to do that. I'm allowed to suggest whatever I want to, and it's up to people to decide whether not they want to take Not put it on my, my page or not. <laughs> oh. Okay, but being positive, okay, weddings are going to start happening, okay? Yep. So once they start happening, say, say okay, less weddings might happen in September, but once they start happening, people in October, November, December are going to be like, my wedding can happen. Mm-hmm. We're, we're going, right? So, so those weddings are going to start happening, so therefore... They don't need the dates that are the limbs of availability in 2021. They don't need it because the wedding's gonna happen, right? Okay, we're getting to a point where the weddings are gonna happen. Okay? You uh, don't know the weddings are gonna happen. I know there's a chance that I, the wedding's gonna happen. I know you're happen, like on go. some sort yeah. of a, a high positive energy vibe, but I'm just gonna put it out there that you you, you, what, you no, no matter how much you want your wedding to happen, yeah, it doesn't mean it'll be allowed to happen. You have to have a plan B in place. Are you telling crybaby Benny to get his head out of the sand? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but you need to have a plan B. And I'm sorry, like, but it, and it's not a negative thing. Having a plan B is a oh, positive step yeah, forward you're cautious, into you at ease. having yeah. like yeah. you need that. The, the worst feeling would be if you're in your positive zone. And then it's pulled from you and you're sitting there going, I'm starting from scratch. I don't have a new date. You try to get a new date and everyone comes back to you. And it doesn't say I'm not available on your date. They say, unfortunately, we're fully fully booked for 2021. Okay. I'm going to be positive back to you, right? So the weddings are going to start happening. Okay. And say if they start happening. You're very certain. 
Yeah. You don't no, know. No, no, I'm that. not saying. I'm, no, no, look, we're in a scenario where they're right. happening, right? The micro okay. weddings are going to happen. Okay. The small weddings are going right. to happen. And then the larger weddings are going to happen, right? Right. So say, say the larger weddings start to happen in October, November, December, okay? Right. All, let, let's say some of those, half of them, or if not more, had a plan B in place. Yeah. Okay. They no longer need their plan B because they yeah. had their wedding. Isn't that good, right? Yeah. So that frees up your kind of, you're your feeling like you're nearly fully booked. In oh yeah, it, it, okay. like it'll that's going to free up some yeah. dates, right? If they if they had a plan B, mm-hmm. they'll loosen up, and that's a good situation for ourselves in terms of whether it's a new couple or whether dare I say it, we have to step back a little, or for some random reason a wedding wedding couldn't happen because people couldn't travel for another country because a different country was having the problem or something like that. Yeah. They just had to cancel their wedding, say, yeah, or postpone their wedding. Nobody's canceling. No, we don't use work okay. cancel. But let's say some weddings are happening in October, some in November, some in December, but one or two random ones. Ha, ha, happen to have to be postponed for whatever reason right yeah. you could have say 10 or 20 plan b dates in 2021 they have their wedding at the end of 2020 that frees up and the one or two that now have to postpone say in december one or two have to postpone hopefully they have a bit more of an option if they're in that awful situation that close to december for whatever reason they have they have to postpone okay. so that's the positive outlook yeah. that might happen. We've we don't have that many we, we, plan Bs we, 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 in our calendar. We, 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 though. You're being a bit. Uh, we, you're we, being we, we overly. We appreciate negative Nelly over there, who's been negative I'm not this week. Negative Nelly. I'm being realistic. I'm just trying to put people in a the realistic situation. No, no, no. I'm being. I'm giving Blunt people advice, and, and I'm helping people look forward to the possibilities of what may happen. I'm the most suggestive person oh, in the world. Your suggestions aren't any good, though, are they? Everything can be implemented. <laughs> no. Samuel understands what I mean, and he's able to visualize it and do. Diagrams. I'm loving your positive positivity. It's right. fabulous. But what I am going to say is, y'all need to have a plan B in place. Go okay. for it. Right. Are you refreshed? That's a pretty big bottle you've got there. It's 1.5 litres. I suppose you could have like a big a ten. vodka. <laughs> <laughs> the, apparently the vodka sorts out the coronavirus, so you're uh, cleaning out your system. No. Okay. It was all the talking. Got me. Right. Um. L- last kind of topic. We're nearly done, are we? Yeah, there's just one more thing I want to talk about. Okay. And that is... The happy end of the lovely couples out there who recently got engaged. And actually, we take this opportunity to say a yeah. massive congratulations to you. Dermot and Sarah. So Dermot and Sarah. Who are Dermot and Sarah, you ask? My brother, well. Dermo. <laughs> Dermo. Dermo Benson, the one and only. Dermo Benson. He is a legend. Dermot is a legend. Now, I do have a, a, a bit of a beef with Dermot. It's true, it's going actually. going on 11 years now. <laughs> actually, so no this longer. Is like, this is like a public request. Yeah. So, um, Dermot, I've sent you... I think I've sent you about 27 um, Facebook friend requests now, if you wouldn't mind just accepting one of them. It's been 11 years. Because he won't even accept my mother, is that right? Oh, I think so, yeah. Or has he accepted, but he's kind of blocked her so he can't see what she does. <laughs> Your poor mother. Because I can see, because sometimes my mother goes, will you get out? I, I, he'll block me now. But sometimes the mother goes... Dermot used to like go away like randomly like to, to the States and Germany and whatnot and it would just be like he would come home on a Monday and go I'm going to Germany on Friday and I mean what are we like what are you doing so um, and, and he'd be like I'm going to a concert I think that's a Dublin mummy thing that's though, a Dub- it? it's a very Dublin, Dublin mummies Dublin need mammies, to know where their know, sons are yeah. at and, all and, and times Dermot, Dermot's very good at like staying quiet yeah. and like it's his yeah. news and he's not telling you I do love the Dublin mammy thing where um, Benny does something and actually just want to point out there she hates the fact that I call him Benny. <laughs> she hates it. Like it's you, not you, his real name. I'm not going to tell everyone your real name. name. No, but no, she hates no. it. But uh, if, if Benny name. does that and wrong or he, he gets himself in trouble for something or something happens I get the full name. she will blame me. <laughs> <laughs> we have a love, love hate rela- relationship now with oh, my mother. We do. Great crack. Um so yeah, so the new couples out there recently engaged. Congratulations, guys. Very exciting. Loads of planning ahead. Um So we were giving Dermot loads of advice. Yeah. We, we, we kind of just said here and, 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 whether he wanted it or not. No, but, but, but let's <laughs> let, let, let's take the opportunity to of number one is what, what I said to him. I said, I'm gonna email on you a load of stuff, okay? Yeah. But at the top of the email, I was like, before I get into this, I was like remember that it's your wedding mm. and it's like I'm giving you all this information I'm not telling you this is how you have your wedding 
Just this what we've seen works. This just is mm. what we've seen works, whatever it is, right? Mm. So this is a big long email with loads of stuff on it, and basically th- th- this is this is what we we we've seen that can be done, and these are what options based on what what he was telling us he would, they were thinking of, and yeah. then, and then the one thing was remember it's your wedding, so don't do what I'm telling you to, but also. No matter who, because everybody, when you sit down at a kitchen table with anybody, whether it's your mates or with your family, Mm -hmm. if you're discussing someone, you're going to end up with six or seven different opinions, whatever it is. And it's the same with every little piece of a wedding. So the bottom line is, at some point, you have to step back and go, hang on, it's our wedding. Yeah. We're going to do what we want to do. Yep. So that's that's the number one thing is um, do what you want to do. Yeah. So then we, we gave him all that and then we were kind of like going, he, he, he was looking at venues, asking us about venues and whatnot. And then we were... Well, that got of, me thinking yeah, then. Yeah, so, I was, so, so how does he start looking? Yeah, because yeah, it, it did get me thinking because obviously all the venues are closed at the moment. Um, now, I know that some of them have been very, very kind of creative and proactive and they would have had it already and some people have put it in place since is they've got virtual tours of the banqueting space the hotel space where it is um, a 3D kind of walk around it's funny you say that actually um, so did you see the email from Fodokina no you didn't no I did. well I saw but I didn't read into it too they much they wanted to do a survey did you do the survey I didn't do the survey no, I've done enough surveys recently <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I did the survey did you yeah right so the survey was actually on virtual tours oh okay because obviously like Photokina so Photokina is like um, a global photo and video and graphics and whatnot. yeah it um, took us three days to get around it yeah it was huge huge so huge. it's like this big trade show yeah everyone from the world the biggest companies in the world go mm. and small companies got go as well mm. and it's like 11 times the size or yes and it's on it's Each. alone in yeah. Germany do you remember when um, we were uh, walking over to uh, the uh, what we went the, the wrong way the, went the wrong way how did we end up going the wrong way it was your fault it was my fault yeah absolutely so we were on a bridge going over and do you, do, you, do you remember the boots? Oh, yeah. Oh, do you remember now, Laura? We do. Yeah. We won't talk about this. So, so, we'll we'll so leave this now. Laura, we'll this, this. Laura decided this to um, to uh, dress up. All dress up. I put on a pair of flat boots. Flat boots. You said to me, it's only there. You're so right. I said, oh, it's not too far. We'll, we'll, it, was, is it, is, it was only there. Is it is it okay right. to walk? And it, you were like, yeah, it it's grand. Because I was like, we're going to be walking around now for the whole day afterwards. Yeah, right. it's only across the thing. It was... You were like Garth Brutes in his big boots. Stop it. Strutting, strutting across a bridge. To all the ladies out there, casual flat walking boots. You now know where we're going with this. Were they riding boots? No, they were riding boots. I don't know. Not to be trusted now. The amount no, of stuff you have. Why right? would I wear horse riding boots? Because that's a very lower thing to do now. I'm wearing horse riding boots since I sold my horse because I was too devastated. Yeah, you don't that. <laughs> right, so we're walking across a bridge and we can see the huge place. And Laura goes, can we walk across a park? And I said, we don't know. You got out your Google Maps and you said... Yeah. You reckon? So, You're going with that? let's keep this story truthful. Okay. I said, probably, there'll be a side entrance. Yeah. So you pretty much said, yeah. So, so walked, you got us lost. So we walked across the park. <laughs> and the amount of people we saw walking around in pairs that were trying to get into this venue, and we just kept walking around the perimeter, it was like... The biggest perimeter Fort in the Knox, world. You couldn't get yeah. in. And we were even thinking of like sneaking up like delivery ramps and all sorts of stuff. Yeah. And, th- and then you would get so far and then there would just be this real technical kind of gate that you couldn't get past. Mm, but, but we got there in the end. And how did your feet feel? They were absolutely fantastically covered in blisters. Were they bleeding? They were bleeding. Actually. And do you remember what the first <laughs> thing... Do you, do you remember the first thing you did? I don't actually. You were on the oh. phone call with me, mother. Was I? Yeah. What were we talking about? Your bleeding feet. All right. So you were having a Dublin uh, mammy Double moment. Dublin mammy moment. In, in Cologne, Germany, sitting there crying about your boots. Yeah, uh, yeah. Having a video fault. call with my mother. But it was your fault though. The thing is, virtual tours are becoming a big thing. Yeah. So much so that trade shows, one of the biggest trade shows in the world, they're basically, they're working out whether should they have a virtual tour because they don't know when they're going to be able to invite everybody from mm. around the world to come to Cologne, Germany. And it really well, that would is, be a big it's thing. everybody from yeah. all different countries. Yeah. So they're going to... Thousands of people yeah, in one so, place. So yeah. it sounds like they're sussing out how to have v- virtual tours. Yeah. And I suppose things like hotels are kind of already on it because they'd have good online galleries. Yeah. 
some of them are already kind of edging towards they have a virtual well, some tour some of them have the virtual tours in place anyway some have put it in place since this happened um, preempting people wanting yeah. look arounds and maybe wedding shows now are going to have uh, a supplementary tours. virtual tour yeah probably that would be pretty cool like yeah. you, because be a lot less work for us <laughs> we're going to stand every time <laughs> if someone struggles to get to, the, to, to it for whatever comes up yeah do you remember the last um show we were at and, and the poor lad was was walking around like a like a lost puppy just just like a deer in headlights oh, yes. and he came over to us and he's like can i just stand with you for a while <laughs> and, I, and i was like i was chatting away to him um he ended up but, having a technical conversation that lasted like too long though it went on forever we did yeah we yeah. started getting a bit techie yeah. but but in that situation i think he, his fiance was a vet had to go in and do an emergency surgery so <laughs> she couldn't accompany him he hadn't been really kind of done research but he was just basically quickly told go and sort one two three out yeah and, and go and he was just he was like so he was overwhelmed yeah. by the whole situation if the wedding expos yeah okay if they had a virtual tour even if you didn't get a chance to go around with everybody maybe you could then use the virtual tour as a, as a tool or you could use the virtual tour as a tool before you go and then it kind of helps you get to to, to what you're looking at. I think going well, forward as, as would be much... Helpful, yeah, like if whatever you can get online and digitally nowadays, going forward, do it because you just don't know when you're going to need it. It's just, it's like the schools, they're they're not equipped for teaching the kids at home like because the school isn't properly... It's not a virtual school. The virtual school doesn't really exist. They're trying, but they're not, they're not able to do it. So like everything needs to be online digital virtual going forward so that if something like this happens you're ready you keep going forward but for what i was for the couples out there that are wanting to set their date and they want to move forward with their planning and they want to book their venues i know the virtual tours are there i know you can get brochures and prices you can and download packages. Brochures, yeah. Yeah. you can have um like zoom calls or facetime calls with maybe with the wedding coordinator to actually ask them questions are they doing that? i would imagine so they need like i would be so shocked if they're not well the other thing is when the hotels open on the 20th of july we all know that like a lot of weddings have, have postponed yeah so therefore the venues, I presume, have a lot of time. When it well, this is it. To, and this is, to, this, to this was people. my question to be... I put up a poll there recently asking um, couples that were newly engaged, like, what are what are you doing at the moment? Like, are, are you using the virtual tours? Or are you waiting for the venues to reopen come yeah, phase four yeah. to, to physically go there? And the majority of people have said that they're waiting. So, like, even though you can do because your you do research, want to, you want to get a feel for it. Yeah. What do you like the atmosphere? Yeah, exactly. Uh, 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 it's just the yeah. it's it's just even the, a room will give you a feeling. You'll walk into a room and you'll straight away get a feeling of, yeah, I can make this work for yeah. my wedding. Or you walk into a room and go, no, I'm just not feeling this. Not I just don't me. like it. Um, so like and it and it's not just the banqueting room it's the drinks reception if you're having your ceremony there it's the feel of the whole space, indoor outdoor yeah. everything um, so I think a lot of people are waiting for venues to reopen now what I would say to you is do your research so like you know the way some people have, they go and they look at 30 different venues because they just can't make up their mind there's really no need to be doing that the amount of times yeah. we've, we've, we've talked to people and then they said oh we looked at 10 or 20 or 30 yeah. venues we and they said, and then we went back to the first yeah. two yeah. and to be honest mm -hmm. they were the first two that we kind of knew we really yeah. wanted but you can be doing your research now though you can be looking at all these venues and you can be looking at their virtual tours and their prices packaging and you can really narrow it down to or some okay, people might know a venue me. from other weddings they've gone to yeah. and they're like that's, that's, my, actually, that's, that's my, my venue, venue no matter what yeah, yeah. And, and they just need well, to get on to those people it. it's easier they can then yeah. set their date but for people that are kind of like they just don't really know where they want to go and but that filters down then to the rest of the wedding industry so like if couples are at a standstill when it comes to booking their venue, they don't have a date, so they can't book the rest of their flyers without a date. So everything kind of gets a yeah, little bit Yeah, well, you can research and go, I like that photographer, I like that yeah. band, I like that videographer and whatnot. And you can have it ready for when you do have your date to, to approach them. But I do think, and where I'm going with this, is that when the venues reopen and the, to the, the consultations start up again, when the couples go in and view it and the dates get set... There could be another surge in date grabs. A surge. A surge in date grabs. A positive surge. A positive surge. So I like surge. the way we're having super positive yeah. stuff. So a, a surge yeah. of new couples. Yeah. Looking with for dates. dates. Yeah. So for the suppliers out it's there, to happen. business is gonna boom back. Mm. For it's gonna be twenty twenty two dates. I think that'll be um that'll suddenly start disappearing 
once people are okay, back so to all these planning. New, all these new couples yeah. are going to start looking at venues, yeah. they're going to look for dates, and they may realise that actually 2021 is pretty full. Yeah. And I think that like I you, think you, you, that might, you might get a random date in the venue, yeah. but actually, when you go and start looking yeah. at two, three, four suppliers, yeah. you realize actually but, this is tough to match up. But at that point, you're kind of looking at the end of the summer, and the majority of people don't plan a wedding in under a year. True. So if you're thinking about going to June next year, so that's less than a year, you're more than likely going to going into 2020. Well, I suppose, yeah, I suppose yeah. months months have been taken away from their yeah. planning if yeah. they got engaged. That's it. If that. you, everything's been kind of put on a standstill unless you're willing to go everything online. So I kind of just wanted to throw that out there as well for couples. Like, it's not that you can't plan, but you can just do a lot of research and you can get a real feel for, you know, really what you want. So it's good in that way. Okay. It's good in that way. Cool. So I think that's kind of everything we want to kind of talk about today. That's enough. That's enough. It's more than enough. And I'm sure we'll have a million and one things well, to talk about again next week the, because it keeps changing. Everything keeps developing. Yeah. And we find it, like the brilliant thing was micro weddings this week. Yep. There, hopefully there's going to be something positive again next week mm-hmm. um, and, and, and the phases are going to start. Yeah, well, I mean, and that will be a big thing. It'll be seeing the phases, like, do they start? And if they start, like, do they is it, do they move from phase to phase within the three weeks so that everything keeps moving forward? And that's what we need things to happen. We need things to keep moving forward. And the biggest thing will be when they announce what a small and large gathering will be. That will put that's gonna be so much clarity for so many people. And it'll either be good news in a sense that it'll be workable yes and people will go no forget the plan B I'm going to go with my original wedding I can work with 100 or 120 or whatever it's going to be because we're going to be positive it's going to be good news yeah and weddings are going to start happening yeah no one's going to need a plan B (laughs) and it's going to be a brilliant year yeah but for all those people that have postponed their wedding definitely because I know Benny's on a positive side of things this is all ifs and buts and what ifs still. Oh, uh, so. you can't make a prediction. You can't make. I go prediction. back to my logical thing. Yeah, and no, goes, you can't. We can make you a can't. prediction and whatnot. Yeah. Like it's uh, yeah. no, no one can predict what's going to happen next week. What's no. good or bad news going to be next week? Certainly can't predict uh, October. I wouldn't have predicted micro weddings last week. If someone said no. to me micro weddings, I would have been adamant I that knew it's successful. That they for. were trying first, but I didn't okay. know whether it would actually work out for them or not because I didn't want to say anything until it actually happened. Oh, you were on the inside track, right? On the inside track, inside scoop. Cool. Yeah. Right, so... Got the inside of most things. Yeah. Are we going to say goodbye? <laughs> I'm not saying... <laughs> How are you saying goodbye this week? Well, I want to hear your doopty doop. Give us your best doopty doop. Like, I mean, come on. You love good doopty doop, The pressure. Oh, the pressure. Do you think you can give us another doopty doop? Or how do you want to say goodbye? I don't know. I, this is you're springing this on me again now. Like I'm last week, let's do a jingle. Loving a bit of a jingle. Yeah, but you kind of went with it uh, with your big giggly head, and you big tried tried to do head. your do. I think I was overly tired you, because we were point. talking for about twenty seven like, hours. If this gets him off the microphone, I will I, well, bloody I'll do a sing a doop to doop. Right. Okay. You don't have to give me a doop to doop. Okay. But thanks. I'm Benny Benson. I'm Laura Headbed. <laughs> Okay, 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 okay. Do you remember who you are now? I suppose can you can you can you go I'm Laura Silverhead Fox I'm gonna have to beep that out. That was, know, that was yeah. a genuine one, Laura. That was terrible. Okay, go on. I again. mean we're supposed to be a lovely couple, right? Okay, go. So I'm Benny Benson. I'm kinda Laura Redhead Benson. You stay safe. You stay classy. And we'll see you next week if we have a podcast, if I'm ever allowed back on this thing again. Or divorce doesn't happen, darling. Okay. Bye. Bye.